All right, it's uh, it's 6 p.m. and uh, we're going to kick off. We are at the first of two meetings for this evening. The first being this, the Committee of the Whole. I want to start by acknowledging that this meeting is being held in land in which we gather is a traditional territory of the Coast and Strait Salish peoples. Specifically, we recognize the Lekwungen speaking people known today as the Songhees and the Esquimalt First Nations and that their historic connections to these lands continue to this day. I also want to highlight that Oak Bay Municipality and these chambers constitute a respectful workplace, and while vigorous debate and free expression of ideas are welcome, comments by council, the public, and staff must ensure all who participate here feel safe and respected. And please note that the video uh, recording of these meetings will take place live streamed and recorded for future purposes. And we're going to kick this off uh, with land use applications. And the first one, we have an advisory design panel uh, development variance permit uh, for 3225 Exeter. Um, if I may, is uh, there, Ms. Jensen, the uh, manager of uh, planning can just give a quick overview of this application. Thank you. Uh, this is a home that's located on Exeter Road, just north of Lansdowne Road. It's a one and a half story single family home constructed in 1959. The owners are proposing to renovate the home by replacing the existing siding with a white stained wood lap siding and gray stone, enclosing a carport to turn it into a garage and then with a new rooftop deck on top of that garage and installing an in-ground swimming pool in the rear yard. They will require a variance for the distance between the home and the swimming pool. The advisory design panel was supportive of the application, uh, recommending minor changes related to the deck and window trim, <coughs> pardon me, which have been incorporated into the design you have in front of you. Staff have also reviewed the application with respect to the site characteristics. The proposed works will update the look of the existing home in keeping with its architectural style. And the siting of the pool, while needing that variance, will serve to protect a nearby Gary Oak and Cedar Tree. A staff are requesting council direction. Thank you, Ms. Jensen. And I'll, is the applicant in the room tonight? Oh, okay. You don't have to come to the to the front just yet. I'll uh, we'll call you up if there's any questions of the of the of the committee. Um, are there any questions from council of staff or the applicant? I'm not seeing any from council. So then I'm going to invite any members of the public that wish to speak to this application three two two five Exeter to come forward. All right. I'm not seeing any, any there. Um, uh, just looking for discussion uh, from council or a motion. I'll move. Oh, okay. I'll make that motion that's to approve Recom the recommend yes, approval. Recommend approval. Okay. So if this passes, the next stage will go out for notification to neighbors for the variance, uh, and then come back to our January uh, council meeting. Uh, all right. With that, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you very much. Item number two in our agenda, we have a uh, heritage alteration permit for 915 Island Road, some replacement of windows. Uh, Ms. Jensen, would you care to give an overview? So this is a heritage designated home which was constructed about 1897. The owners are proposing to redo the windows on the front and north sides of the home. There are three window openings on the front of the home which will be enlarged and replaced with new divided light windows. And then there's one kitchen window on the side that will also be replaced and another second window um, sited adjacent to it which will be of the same style. The existing windows do have some decorative details along the base of the window and depending on the condition of the trim, these will either be restored or replaced with the same design. Overall, the new windows will closely reflect the neighboring heritage home at 929 Island Road and the works will preserve the heritage character of the house. The Heritage Commission reviewed the application at their November meeting and had no concerns. They supported the application. Thank you, Ms. Jensen. Is the applicant here? There you are. Uh, if there's any questions, I'll call you forward, but um, are there any questions of the applicant or of staff by members of the committee? Seeing any, is there anybody from the audience who wishes to speak to this application? Seeing none, uh, then... I make, uh, make a recommendation, a move that we recommend to council that the application to modify window openings at 915 Allen Road be approved subject to issuance of heritage alteration per permit HAP 0016. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, I'll call the question. Any, all those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you. And so uh, this isn't completely officially done, but since we're recommending to ourselves and we're meeting right after this meeting, uh, it's a fairly safe bet that it'll be approved at the following meeting officially. So thank you. And that'll be the end of that process. 
Uh, moving on to item number three, we have a uh, heritage revitalization agreement, heritage addition, heritage alteration permit for 1561 York Place. I imagine there's people here to talk to this item. Um, uh, so just uh, as we kick this off, I will um, just give a quick overview of the process, then we'll hand it over to Ms. Jensen, then we'll invite the applicant up to, to speak to it. Um, this is a heritage revitalization agreement uh, and other pieces. Um, we have to determine as a committee whether the application is ready to proceed. Um, this, I want to make clear that there is an existing building permit uh, in place for a new new house and a, a driveway access at the south end of Prospect Lane. Um, that's not the debate that we're here for tonight. It's really to consider the merits of the heritage revitalization agreement and the details that go along with that. Um, it's also understood that there's uh, there is an, there is this land qualifies for a two lot subdivision under the current zoning. Um, so what's being considered here really is a four lot subdivision. I'll let Ms. Jensen talk to the details of that. Um, you know, I guess I'll just say to the to the committee at the beginning of this, we're trying to get through this in a reasonably expedient fashion that we want to uh, look at this from the highest level and make sure that we're measuring, we're weighing the balance of the of the uh, of the ask versus the benefit to the community, and that's going to be sort of the the Solomon's wisdom that we go through here. And there are three options available to us tonight. Uh, one we can decline, in which case the application can come back for in its current form for about another six months. Um, we can approve it in its uh, essentially in its current form, in which case we'll go to uh, first and second reading and setting a public hearing date at the council meeting following uh, or other and all I would just ask is if you're thinking of other um, i.e. There's, there's aspects of this that you think are positive but you want to see some changes we want to be as clear as possible in our directions to council or to staff uh, to go away and, and, and to the applicant to consider any changes that might come forward. Um, so with that um, I'll just hand it over to Ms. Jensen. Thank you. So through this heritage revitalization agreement application, the applicant is proposing to uh, undertake three things. Move, restore, and heritage designate the existing carriage house at a new location down in Windsor Park adjacent to the Heritage Rose Garden. Restore and heritage designate the rock wall sited along both York Place and Prospect Place. This would include some additional openings in the Prospect Place walk, walk wall. Rock wall for access and to facilitate the creation of four lots. So just as a bit of background, the Local Government Act does contain provisions for a heritage revitalization agreement as a means of allowing redevelopment of a heritage property while respecting its heritage character. It can set, for example, terms and conditions for items such as use and density, and it does take precedence over other bylaws. So, in, for example, if you set it as a, an RS5 zone, it wouldn't change the zoning, but it would restrict it to those types of uses. Its primary intent is to preserve the heritage features while allowing some form of benefit to the owner, but the provisions of the agreement must be agreed to by both the owner and the municipality. This property is not on the Oak Bay Heritage Register, nor are any of the features such as the carriage house and the rock walls. The applicant is proposing to designate them as part of this process and place them on the Oak Bay Heritage Register. Statements of significance have been prepared by Donald Luxton and Associates to determine the heritage value. 1561 York Place was originally part of the Annandale Estate and has been under the ownership of Sir Charles Hibbert Tupper and subsequently Robert Scott. The property was subdivided from the original estate under Scott's ownership, so this would be the second subdivision of the estate. The rock walls are constructed of granite and run the length of the property along both Prospect and York. The carriage house is constructed in a Queen Anne Revival style, which is a simplified version of the main house. The property itself is vacant, with the exception of the rock walls and the carriage house. A building permit and a driveway access permit have been issued to construct a single family home on the lot that would be accessed from the southerly portion of the lot along Prospect Place. It is zoned RS2 and falls under the official community plan established neighborhoods designation. At approximately 6,240 square meters, this would allow for a two-lot subdivision. The applicant is proposing four lots under this application. As mentioned, this property is not on the heritage register, so there's currently no legal heritage protection for the walls or the carriage house. The proposal has been reviewed by the Heritage Commission. Their recommendation to deny is included in the staff report. Staff are now requesting council direction as to the options and recommendations outlined in the report. Thank you, Ms. Jensen. Um, I think it's probably appropriate for the applicant to come and give a, a brief presentation as well, and then we can take questions 
of staff or the uh, or the applicant at that time. Um, so if the applicant is here, you're welcome to come forward. And I just ask that uh, you give your name and uh, municipality uh, and Now we have it. We have. Uh, you just have your name and and yeah, you can just you can raise that up a little bit if you wish. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Oh, I think I've got. Try that. Thank you, Your Worship. <coughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Members of Council. My name is Mike Miller, and I live at seven five four Mount Joy in Oak Bay. And I'm the applicant um, before you this evening, along with my wife, Rebecca. I would like to briefly introduce the project team that is also here with me this evening. Uh, Adam Cooper, Senior Development Manager at Abstract Developments, our heritage consultant from Donald Luxton and Associates, one of the most highly regarded heritage consultants in British Columbia. Donald, unfortunately, was unable to be in attendance this evening. However, he sent an associate from his office, Elijah Sabalan, uh, his team, um, from, from his team to answer any uh, specific questions. And then from uh, Scott Murdoch, sorry, Scott Murdoch, principal from Murdoch and Degree for Landscape Architects is also here this evening. So just a little bit of history um, for the property that's brought us here um, tonight. The property is 1.54 acres fronting onto York Place as well as Prospect Place. And as uh, as Ms. Jensen uh, mentioned, it was subdivided off of Annandale many years ago. A fire in 1986 left the property vacant and derelict for nearly 33 years. Some of you may recall there was a faded for sale sign on both streets for many years. I know lots of neighbors, including myself, phoned and emailed the owner to no avail. However, after six years of persistence, we were excited to receive an accepted offer in the summer, <coughs> excuse me, in the summer of 2016. We are grateful and honored to work with this property and be able to build our family home. We value so many things about this area, most notably its proximity to all the amenities in Oak Bay and then the community cherishes. A bit of history about, about um, us. Myself and my family currently live in Oak Bay, as previously mentioned, and we have since early 2000, with the exception of a brief stint in Fairfield. My wife actually grew up a few blocks away on Byron, which is one of the key reasons that drew us to this property. Just a little bit about the development uh, process that we've, uh, that's, um, that's taken us here tonight. Again, we purchased the property in the summer of 2016. Consultation began in the fall of 2016, which included many mail outs to adjacent neighbors and the broader community. At the Windsor Pavilion, we held a meeting on January 25th, 2017, public open house. Again, at Windsor Pavilion, January 11th, 2018. In October 2016 to present, we've held approximately 10 private meetings <clears throat> in small groups and individually with many neighbors all held uh, um, at my office, our family home, or the local coffee shops. In October 2017, we were issued a building permit without a variance for a new driveway crossing and a single family home. Subsequently, after that, we submitted a subdivision application just over 14 months ago. In August 2018, based on discussions with staff, we changed their application from a four lot subdivision to a heritage revitalization agreement. In summary, we are pleased to be presenting for you this evening a heritage revitalization agreement without any variances on all of the four lots respectively, which includes the designation of two rock walls along York Place and Prospect Place, as well as an agreement with Oak Bay to relocate the carriage house to Windsor Park at where it will serve park users and be visible for public enjoyment. I thought it might be helpful to give a 
brief overview of a couple past projects that we have uh, that have had a heritage component that are also located in Oak Bay. I raise this only to demonstrate that we have the expertise and capacity to deal with sensitive heritage resources in a meaningful way and with a high level of care and quality. On the screen before you, you see the Griffith, a voluntary heritage designated home located at Edgecliff Estate along Fall Bay Road. Edgecliff Estate is an enclave of four tastefully appointed single family homes on approximately 1.5 acres of land, coincidentally almost exactly the same as 1561 York Place. This project won numerous awards, including Best Residential Renovation, over $1 million. I also wanted to highlight one other project that's currently uh, in the system, uh, an HRA um, in Oak Bay. Some of you may recall our HRA application for 644 Beach Drive which will see a 1927 McClure home restored and designated along with many sensitive modifications that were supported by the project's heritage consultant. The modifications include, but not limited to, four new roof dormers, a new two-car garage, and a new renovation and a full renovation to the interior along with overall with overall site undergoing significant topography alterations to facilitate the construction of new roadways and lot servicing. I would now like to turn the presentation over to Adam Cooper, who will speak to the more techni technical planning aspects of this application. Thank you. Out of curiosity, should I be stating my address as well? You should. <coughs> so, address, and, and we'll just try and get through this reasonably quickly. Sure. I'll try to pick up the pace a little bit here for you. Adam Cooper, 4582 Seawood Terrace. Um, I think in the interest of moving this along, some of these points have been made by staff and Mike, so I don't need to reiterate the location of the property, et cetera. So I'll move through some of this. Uh, you know, you have already stated a number of the important features of the land subdivision potential, et cetera. Um, I think everyone at this point is also probably quite familiar that we're dealing with the remnants of the Annandale estate, in particular, the carriage house and the rock walls. So I won't put too much effort onto that. I did want to highlight this for council just to say that there has been an evolution of change in the neighborhood over the last 120 years. Uh, these are from the fire insurance maps. So the image on the left actually shows Garrison House as well as Annandale uh, on their original parcels. And you can see over time how that uh, parcel that contained Garrison House was subdivided and uh, turned into 11 new lots, of which uh, two of them actually contain homes that now have a heritage designation in the neighborhood. So there is a history of change in the neighborhood, which is the context that we're trying to set. Um, I did want to make a point that uh, I took the opportunity to read all of the correspondence that came in on the application, of which there was a lot. Um, and what was clear to me is that people in Victoria, Oak Bay, Colwood, the region, are passionate about heritage. Uh, they feel that the Prospect neighborhood has a special character, and they like the heritage features of 1561 York Place to be retained. It's clear that they think the best way to achieve that outcome is for Council to deny the current application, and some of the rationale that they provided relate to the size of the home being proposed, its character, the impact of the rock wall, and the pending uh, heritage conservation area guidelines. Unfortunately, that rationale is a little bit conflated and confused, um, but given the volume of correspondence, I did want to speak to it. I feel that as the applicant, we had a duty to speak to that. And I just wanted to outline a couple of points about the application to say what it's about and what it's not about. And uh, your worship, you did speak to this briefly, but the application is not about the approved building permit to construct a single family home. The home and that crossing were approved and considered an existing legal use. Um, it's also not about the heritage conservation area uh, that's being developed in this neighborhood. <clears throat> yes, a working group has compiled the document for council to consider. However, until such a time as council reviews that document, conducts public consultation and a public hearing, it has no force or effect. Applications for land use changes must be evaluated against the rules in place at the time the application was made. It would be inappropriate to evaluate an application based on speculation about what a future council policy may or may not look like. 
So what is this about? The application is asking council to consider the merits of subdividing 1561 York Place from one very large single family lot into four modest sized lots. You're being asked to consider whether this request to subdivide the land is balanced against the applicant's offer to designate and restore the Annandale remnants. It's important to note, as was noted, that today these features are not afforded any formal heritage protection. The rock walls along both frontages could be removed by the property owner without a demolition permit. The carriage house could be removed with an approved demolition permit, which could only be denied if council were to force a heritage designation on the structure. But rather than remove these heritage resources, the application that we're bringing in front of you tonight is proposing to do exactly what the public would like to see happen here, to retain and protect these resources. The application proposes to retain 88% of the prospect place wall and to designate and rehabilitate it in a historically appropriate manner. This is approximately the same amount of wall that would remain if the applicant was to choose the as of right two lot subdivision option that would permit four driveway crossings, which would not require a council approval. The application also proposes to preserve and designate 100% of the York Place granite wall, which features a higher degree of craftsmanship and tooling in comparison to the Prospect Place rubble wall. Finally, the application proposes to relocate, restore, and designate the carriage house, where it will continue to serve a community function and more importantly, enhance its prominence. In its new location, it will be viewed by the public in the full grandeur of its original condition. Now, I raise these points to suggest that in order to satisfy the public's desire to preserve and restore the heritage features of the property, Council should in fact support this application and not deny it. The application is balanced in its request and facilitates a significant step towards retaining the heritage features of the prospect neighbourhood that residents of Oak Bay and the region desire to be retained and protected. In terms of the technical details, the property is about an acre and a half or 67,000 square feet in size. This is approximately three times the minimum lot size for an RS2 lot, which makes it one of the largest single family lots in the area. Based on that lot area, this could be equivalent to about 11 RS5 lots, which is the zoning of the adjacent properties around 1561 York. It's comparable in size to some of the largest lots in Oak Bay and would support the construction of a single family home of up to 24,000 square feet, not including a basement. And importantly, Oak Bay's own OCP notes that these larger lots do have potential to be subdivided into multiple lots. This proposal would see the lot subdivided to create three new lots, one RS3 facing York and two new RS5 lots facing Prospect Place. The remnant parcel in the middle would retain the RS2 zoning. Each of these proposed lots exceeds the minimum lot sizes required by the applicable zoning standard, and in all cases, the minimum lot areas and minimum lot widths are achieved or exceeded. In addition to exceeding the applicable zoning requirements, the lots are also contextually relevant to the pattern of development in the neighborhood. As noted in the staff report and highlighted here, the site layout has been designed to reflect the existing neighborhood scale with individual lots reflecting the adjacent lots. In terms of the subdivision, uh, how it would be serviced with underground utilities, this schematic diagram is showing the orange lines as the property lines, the red line here as the prospect place wall, the green area being a new planted uh, boulevard space, and uh, the sidewalk to the south of that with the uh, three proposed crossings and the one approved existing crossing. Um, this subdivision servicing concept has been designed to meet Oak Bay's engineering standards and we focused our efforts to bring all of the servicing from Prospect as Prospect is already in need uh, of repair. There's a lot of potholes, the street's quite tired and worn. So we wanted to pull everything away from York Place, not have any impact on the higher order York Wall and focus all of our restoration efforts on Prospect Uh, which also has a boulevard that's um, currently full of a lot of invasive species and it needs work to rehabilitate that space. The proposed driveway crossings on Prospect would be designed to match the existing gate posts along Prospect Place. These are square with grey mortar and a rope pointing profile topped off with a crenellated granite top. 
They would all be constructed with oversight from our heritage consultant, and we would utilize the best practices in blasting techniques. Uh, bracing would be used as, if necessary, and we would use low phytotoxicity explosives as well as other techniques to minimize any possible wall damage. I was planning to speak to the specific features of the property, but I think we can probably move beyond that. There was a description of the carriage house as well as the rock walls. We did make a significant effort to find a donor site for the carriage house on the property. That included working with Oak Bay staff, uh, residents in the neighborhood, members of the HCA working group, as well as the uh, Protect Oak Bay Heritage Group to see if we could find someone or somewhere uh, within the district to relocate the carriage house to. Our best attempt at this was the Provincial Heritage Branch actually uh, came forward with the proposal that we move the carriage house to Point Ellis, um, which is a Provincial Heritage site. They were actually looking for a structure to store the province's collection of carriages. Uh, however, unfortunately, a new manager took over that property and uh, we weren't able to see that proposal through to completion. In the meantime, however, Oak Bay Parks and Planning staff did come forward with a proposal uh, to us to move the carriage house to Windsor Park, where it would replace this aging structure that's used by the field users in the park. So we're happy that it would move uh, adjacent to the historic Rose Garden, uh, stay within Oak Bay, and also be visible to the public and, and continue to be used by the public. Again, the rock walls were mentioned. I think everyone's familiar with these, so I'll uh, move over these two pieces. And just to end by saying, um, to reiterate the key points here for Council, that this RS2 lot would be subdivided into four lots which meet all of the zoning requirements and that they're contextually consistent with the pattern of lots in the neighbourhood. The carriage house would be restored, designated and moved to a place where it can be enjoyed by the public. The rock walls would be designated and restored uh, on York and would remain 100% intact. The rock wall on Prospect would be designated and restored with three new openings. Now, if Council approves our proposal, the key features of the site would be given a heritage protection that they're not afforded today, guaranteeing that they'll be restored and protected into the future. When all is said and done from this proposal, 91% of the rock walls around the property will remain in their original condition, and the carriage house would be restored to its original condition. To ensure that we complete that work appropriately, we are required to provide bonding to the district at two and a half times the value of the construction costs for a total of $672,424. So a significant sum of money to make sure the work is completed appropriately. I wanted to end just by making a quote that came from the City of Victoria's draft Old Town Heritage Guidelines. For many years, design guidelines for historic areas have emphasized subservience to the past. Their key message was that design in a historic context must be imitative. However, we are stewards, not curators, of the historic environment. Our region is evolving. It is not a museum object. As such, we have a duty and stewardship of the past to respond to changing ways of working, living, and playing. Thank you for your time and consideration. Be more than happy to answer any questions that Council might have. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Um, I'll probably take the first question is more directed towards staff, and then we'll get to the, to sure, the specific thanks. of the application first. And uh, Councillor Patterson, then Councillor Braithwaite. Yeah, just uh, going first to um, the documents themselves. Schedule A that is attached to the agreement, Section 15 on damage and destruction provides for repair or reconstruction um, if there is less than substantial damage, so anything under 75% of the heritage building value. Um, and so my question is, what though, uh, particularly I guess it comes to mind with the, with the carriage house, um, if it sustains damage greater than the 75%, um, what benefit then comes to the community if essentially the building, you know, when it when it's in the moving process becomes just a, a pile of sticks. And yes, I know there's a provision that it would be rebuilt, but if it is substantially restored to that estate, to that uh, percentage, 
or um, restored to that percentage, does it then still retain the same value as so it would? This is the question on the bylaw itself. Yeah. That, that so that's the bylaw it. itself, yeah. So um, I'll give that to staff to answer uh, what would happen. I think of this as fairly standard language when you're talking about the responsibility to replace versus rebuild percentages. Yeah, but I'll, I'll give it to staff to answer. Yeah. I guess I've seen clauses where if, um, if there is a risk because of um, an object being in uh, a condition where there's reasonable expectation that it might not be transferred intact, um, then it becomes a consideration of a restored building, does it have the same value as it would have um, if, it, if it didn't have to be restored to that extent? And sometimes there are provisions to the community, if that happens, that there will be um, a contribution if the object doesn't survive the transfer. So I'll, I'll let staff uh, answer this question if they have an answer for it. I also would just ask maybe at this committee to start with if we can keep the discussion around what the committee wants. Um, if the council, if the committee doesn't want to get into the, this, this aren't satisfied with the aspects of this particular HRA, then we're probably getting into the weeds of the actual agreement might be a little early. So I'd, I'd like to kind of make sure we get a, we sort of suss out what it is that we want to get to. Uh, Mr. Anderson. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, members of council. Um, it is a, a standard clause in an agreement of, of this nature, and it does basically provide for uh, the district to require uh, something that is damaged to be uh, brought to the condition that, that it was when it was relocated. So it's just a protection for us, basically, to ensure that that, um, that has to be um, moved and, and kept in that in the condition as agreed to. So it's, it's, it, it is a very standard clause in an agreement. Is there anything else at this, Ms. Patterson, Councillor Patterson? Uh, another one. Another question that I have is that um, uh, bylaw four seven two four designates um, Windsor Road where it would be transferred to as a protected municipal heritage sites, and so I'm just wondering what the implications are um, from uh, the park's master plan of having a heritage site at Windsor Park. I will pass it. I'm not sure if I we go to the director of parks or to uh, to manager of planning. I'll see if I can start the answer. Uh, it is it would be designated, so it is protected even in that location. It's protected um, starting at, at York Place and then moving over to Windsor Road as it's completed. It remains protected over in that area. So if any uh, major revisions were to be made to that building, they would also be subject to going through a heritage alteration permit process. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Patterson? So just as a follow-up to that, um, I, I guess what I'm trying to gauge is, is it is it a benefit to the park to have a designated heritage site there, or is it, a, in the longer-term plan, more of um, a, a, a problem to overcome having it there? Maybe I can reframe that question to Mr. Herman. Just if you can give us some sense of... Uh, this building on that site, its appropriateness for its for its use. Um. Sure, Your Worship. Uh, operationally, uh, as has been mentioned, the uh, the storage shed that exists at the park now is um, in a bad state of repair, and and uh, if this building were to be moved there, it would serve a useful purpose. Uh, we never have a challenge in filling up uh, storage space that comes available. Uh, in terms of heritage infrastructure inside a park, I think we have some of those in other locations, in Willows and, and things. There's uh, the entrance gates there are, have a heritage designation. I'm not aware that there's ever been an issue. Thank you. Councillor Braithwaite and Councillor Green. Um, thank you. I, I actually do want to touch on something that um, it was said that we should not be talking about, um, which is the, uh, but I'm hoping that you can hear my question first and tell me if it's appropriate or not. Um, but it goes back to the um, house that has been originally been approved. And the only reason that I want to bring it up is because it is mentioned in the bylaw. And so I feel like I should be able to talk about it. Um, and my question to staff is that, um, 
approval was given for the opening in the wall and the house on that lot before any thought of a subdivision had come forward. So it was approved on that basis. In my mind, when they've now come to the table and said they want to now subdivide, I would think that the whole that that whole application should have been set to one side, um, and then all, uh, thought of in uh, contextually with the other four the other three lots and start again from scratch. Is that not what our process would be in something like this, Mr. Anderson? Yeah, I, I would say no. It's not. But what what we would ensure is that um, any subdivision would not create any any variances respecting the the permitted. Uh, house that we've given the building permit for so it's more you look at it from the perspective of what does the proposed subdivision do uh, respecting that building permit that's been issued and and are we creating lots that allow that um, building that's been approved to meet the the bylaw requirements for say yard setbacks so that's the view that we would take of it rather than um, stop the the building permit so I understand that view. However, I'm not saying that I agree with it. Um, to me, it should have it, it, it would have made more sense to me, um, especially based on um, the uh, the public interest in the wall, etc. Um, that we would have taken that first application off the table and started afresh and included it all as one application. So that would be something that I would like a consideration for. Um, my next question would be that, um, and I think you probably answered it, and that, and that the house that's already been approved um, would, not, would not be allowed any variances if a four-lot subdivision was allowed to go in. Is that correct? Well, again, through the subdivision re review process, we would uh, work with the applicants to, to, to that end to not create a, a requirement for variances. But I think you probably know that there's a right for anybody to make application for any of these uh, um, variances. Right, so really our hands are tied almost in that respect because even though the applicant can say now that there won't be any variances, there could possibly be variances. Um, so my net last question, because I'll let it go on to someone else for now um, before I delve into the actual bylaw, because I have a lot of questions on that. Um, why, can we, why could we insist in other areas in the municipality of only having one driveway access? And why can't we do that to this particular um, uh, location because I know that for example on the Jones estate um, they they had a very similar situation where they had a very uh, a wall that was um, uh, that was a heritage wall and they only allowed one driveway access into that whole area and that seemed to um, placate the neighbors and, and it would made the neighbors much happier to only have that one driveway access well, Ms. Jensen, do you want to answer that question? I might actually let the applicant answer that as well. I think it's, in some ways it's a matter of choice of the applicant as to which way they want to go. But Ms. Jensen? Yeah, unfortunately I can't speak to the Jones estate. That's a little bit before my time. But uh, for the current regulations that are in place, if a parcel, uh, any given lot, is beyond a certain um, width of frontage, I think it's 100 feet, you are entitled to have two driveway access points. So should... Is that something that council wishes to have a conversation on? You're certainly free to do that. Right. So it, it, just because you're allowed to have that much access doesn't mean that we have to approve that much access. No. Again, it would be an agreement yeah. between council and the applicant as to what, what you want to agree okay. on. Thank you. I'll acquiesce to someone else to ask questions. Uh, I might just, out of courtesy, because I believe this is in many ways a choice uh, piece, um, and there have been a number of letters, you know, written that that highlight, frankly, the the pre preference to using that uh, the York Place entrance. Perhaps the applicant could, Mr. Miller, could just give a quick overview of of why this uh, this approach has been chosen. Thank you, Worship. Uh, through you to Councillor Braithwaite. Um, <clears throat> every single project is is different. Uh, I'm somewhat familiar with the Jones Estate. Um, uh, I don't know if the wall was designated prior to an application, or if it is now, I can't speak to that, but I, I do understand the site uh, layout a bit. And coincidentally, it's very similar to that of Edgecliff Estate as well, coincidentally. Um, a lot of things that drive uh, um, access driveway crossings um, is site topography. So, um, you know, one could bring, if bringing a singular access up into off a prospect would be extremely challenging from a topography perspective it would it would um it would 
it just wouldn't be feasible. I, I'm happy to get into details, but uh, for, uh, I'll state that it's engineeringly challenging. Uh, coming off a of York Place would still require a significant modification to the York Place uh, access, um, requiring approximately a six meter opening. And right now it's probably about 3.2 meters or so. So that would have to expand thus requiring an increase to York. Plus all the traffic would be uh, designed to come off a of York Place. I'm, I'm adding it all, so I, there's rationale here. All the traffic would have to come off York Place, um, that of which in discussions with a few people on York Place, not overly appealing to that. It would also require a bulb, a six meter bulb thereabouts. Uh, there's sometimes uh, room for negotiation there, but six meter bulb for a fire truck to come in off a of York Place and service uh, inside, essentially inside, up adjacent to the Annandale estate. Um, and then notwithstanding all that, um, our application is for a fee simple subdivision. Thus, you must require frontage onto a uh, um, municipally owned road for fee simple. And lastly, um, the, the home in which we desire, respecting that an HRA, like a rezoning or what have you, is a request, not a right. Uh, and it just wouldn't facilitate the construction, um, or sorry, the site design of our house, putting essentially a six meter bulb right smack dab in the middle of the Annandale estate. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bracey, anything else at this time? Uh, no, I let you move on to someone Councilor else. Councillor Green, then Councillor Nee. Thank you, Chair, and through you to Mr. Herman. M uh, Mr. Herman, so in essence, the carriage house would be moved to the Rose Garden, which is already designated a heritage garden, I believe. Is that correct? Yes. Um, there was no specific budget amount for annual maintenance on this building. I'm just wondering, it, it said it would be very small and, and wouldn't have a, a huge impact on budget, but... In, in my experience uh, working on the commission and, and knowing about older homes in Oak Bay, annual maintenance can be um, costly. So I just want to know um, what is the, do you have any idea what this building might cost the municipality and taxpayers ultimately for maintenance? Thank you. Uh, Your Worship, staff haven't done any type of analysis on that at this point. Uh, I would expect if the building is going to be refurbished, it would come in good condition, and it would be, I guess, common sense to expect that in the first few years, the budget impact would be quite small, and then as the building gets older, similar to any other buildings, the the amount of uh, upkeep would required would be more, particularly to keep it in a state where the heritage value is still um, there for the community to enjoy but staff have not done any analysis as to what those numbers would look like over the expected lifespan of a reconditioned building. Thank you. Councillor Nay. Yeah. Thank you, through you, Chair, to staff. Um, uh, a few questions around uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the possibilities within the HRA. So my first question has to do with the placements of the driveways on the site plan we have here. So did those come from the applicant or were they negotiated with staff? Those are coming from the applicant. Okay, so and um, so those could be moved if, I mean, as I was looking at them, I was just wondering, that, that's still a possibility here. There's no reason they are where they are. I mean, that could be, that could be part of the negotiation. That is a conversation you can have, yes. Okay, and um, also within the HRA, is it possible to negotiate variances on put, uh, some of the uh, lot proposals? Some, I'm, I'm thinking of um, setting um, setback variances, for example. Could, could that cont be a possible negotiation item within the HRA? It, it, to give more detail, do you understand? Do you need more detail what I'm getting at, or are you okay just to answer that? Uh, I th if we're talking about where they could build on the site, there's currently no proposal for any variances that would shorten the setbacks to the front lot line, the side lot lines, and so on. If you're talking about where specifically you would like to see homes or buildings or driveways located, that is something that we could attach into an HRA as a, as a site plan, for example, to show where, 
where those buildings would, would sit, roughly. Okay, so so let's say, for example, there was some will to set uh, the, the, uh, the building of a house on one of the flanked properties on the north south, the smaller ones, set it back further to improve the streetscape. That could be negotiated. Correct. Okay, and then finally, I just want a question around the blasting. I, I, I don't know if that's a, something that could be part of an HRA negotiation, but my question actually is, could there be any uh, requirement for uh, more controls around uh, the, by the blasting over and above what our current blasting bylaw uh, requires? What I'm at getting at is if we could ensure sort of more mitigation of um, impact on neighbors with increased controls on blasting. That's the question. So may I ask, uh, in terms of mitigation uh, through your worship, uh, mitigation of impact on neighbors, do you have anything specific in well, mind? Because I, we have I, I don't hours, uh, we have control over the hours or over oh, blasting. Oh, I see. Uh, there's a process for, um, it's determined, it, it's actually a federally approved process, but there is a process that's determined in terms of through the insurance companies whether or not there's any pre-blast surveys done on adjacent adjacent homes. There's, there's a, a, I guess, a process that's in place to to mm -hmm. mitigate or, or ensure those impacts are, are mitigated. Uh, I just wonder, is there something in addition to to those two particular okay. pieces? Yeah. Right. Okay. So I, I'm not an engineer by any means, but it was just some street talk. It was mentioned to me that there are there is a technology that can be used in blasting that would mitigate impact above and beyond what the, the requirements are in, in, in terms of the standards of our bylaw. So I, I, my question just is, is that something that could be negotiated within the framework of the HRA? That's really what I was wondering. And I've, just to follow up on that, we actually do have a clause in the Heritage Revitalization Agreement that speaks to um, blasting uh, near the rock walls or the surrounding environment using low phytotoxic toxicity and, and other types of techniques to mitigate the impact on blasting. That clause is all also carried through into the heritage alteration permit for the rock walls. Uh, Councillor Braithwaite and then uh, Patterson. Thank you. Actually, um, I had a question around the blasting as well, because on page five of your report, Ms. Jensen, um, it says, a report repaired, uh, prepared by Rizek De Geotechnical confirms that Prospect Place wall is in fair condition and should withstand any alterations to the wall and overall site development as long as blasting is maintained at, an acceptable, at acceptable levels. And so I, that, that's my question as well, is like what is an acceptable level for blasting around those walls and how long um, is uh, the blasting to take place if we know those and that might be more directed to the applicant. Uh, Ms. Jensen or Mr. Uh, one of the, Mr. Miller, Mr. Miller, welcome. Thank you, Worship. Uh, through you to Councilor Braithwaite. Um, <clears throat> specifically, um, the blasting um, through the Prospect Place walls is uh, overseen by our heritage consultant, so I could table that question to him. There's sp specific um, techniques that we have to follow in order to comply with the heritage revitalization agreement. Um, and that would essentially take care of the um, of the um, uh, um, penetration through the through the rock wall, and we would, of course, I guess it's I don't know if it's a loophole or not, but we wouldn't we would take that same technique through the already approved uh, driveway crossing as well. Does that does that answer your question? And perhaps I push that or sorry, table that off to the um, heritage consultant. Uh, it kind of answers my question, but uh, do you know have a length of time that the blasting will go on for? Because I know that on some sites, blasting goes on for months and months and months and months. I understand your question now. The the blasting to come through the wall would be probably somewhere between five and ten days at the most. It's it's a it's actually not a lot of work to because the wall is actually on the property line. So then it really becomes after that blasting required to do building as per bylaw and that would have to go through a separate process with uh, building permits and things like that so it would be hard for me to tell you what that would be on on homes that aren't 
they're, that aren't designed yet. So I would say five days going really slow, five to 10 days. For, for the wall only, not for the rest of the lot. Correct, because that would, of course, have a lot to do with the site, or sorry, the building design. Thank you. Uh, Councillor ahead, uh, Patterson. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, through you to probably the um, archivist consultant for the applicant, um, Oak Bay's official community plan, the heritage objectives are outlined in that, and one of them is to conserve natural landscapes, and if I look at the standards and guidelines for national parks, conserve is to uh, protect from harm or destruction. As the applicant pointed out, this is um, one of the most substantial properties within that portion of Oak Bay and, and what will be, a, a, we hope, a heritage conservation area. So it's a substantial piece of property. And we've just talked about the blasting, and we said that 91% of the rock walls will be remaining, but I'm wondering what percentage of the natural landscape will be removed through the blasting. Uh, Mr. Sablan, welcome. And uh, perhaps Good just get your, uh, your uh, area of your address or, 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 or jurisdiction of work as well. Um, Elijah Sablan, um, Heritage Consultant, Donald Luxon & Associates, a conservation specialist. Uh, I live in Vancouver, uh, 395 Beach Avenue. Um, through the chair to uh, Councillor Patterson. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, as per the uh, standards and guidelines, um, when we review these, again, looking at the uh, HRA uh, in place, we are looking at the conservation of the carriage house and also the, uh, the, rock, uh, the rock walls. And in particular, um, I believe my colleague Adam um, um, was talking about um, the evolution uh, of, of that of that site. Um, as you mentioned, in terms of the cultural landscapes, um, these, the, the guidelines are divided into subsections. And you can, we, we looked at it in terms of the evidence of land use, the land pattern, the uh, spatial organization, um, circulation, and also built features. Uh, in terms of uh, looking at the existing condition, most of the uh, uh, the features um, of, of, of the estate has been um, disturbed over time, including the, uh, the severance of, of, of the lot from the, uh, um, from, from the Annandale house to the, uh, even the, the carriage uh, house. Um, and also in terms of facilitating the, the, the growth and uh, evolution uh, of, this, of this area, you look at the um, the evidences of the land pattern, and also the um, uh, the uh, the state, or if the character defining elements are intact. Uh, in terms of the uh, the the rock walls, the rock walls you you, look, you have two essentially um, walls. The primary being the uh, the one in York. I believe, and um, the secondary being the prospect, uh, uh, prospect place, and the uh, the intent is to retain the the integrity uh, of those walls by keeping one intact, which is the primary wall, and rehabilitating the ones on the rear so that they could function um, and um, assist with the with the new uh, land subdivision. And so in terms of the, uh, the landscape itself, uh, when we're looking at the, the guideline and ensuring that the integrity is intact, um, it, 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 it adheres to the guidelines. Um, and in terms of the, uh, the other um, uh, landscaping features within, within the site, um, it is unfortunate, similar to the, to the, to the other uh, areas of the estate, that it's not, it, it's not intact. And it's meant to it, it's meant to evolve and uh, be be reused uh, into um, a new uh, to to place a new house um, and uh, to to promote uh, development. Does that answer your question? <laughs>
Not, I, I'm still not quite clear as to the, their, the, the lot as it sits right now and, and the carriage house on it, it sits quite ele mm -hmm. elevated above the land because there is so much rock formation. Um, and I know certainly uh, feedback from the community <coughs> and certainly the Heritage Commission, there's a, a strong recognition of the value of heritage in the natural landscape. Right. So I guess if, if you're doing substantial blasting, it means to me that you are removing, in essence, the land, the rock. So, um, you know, in terms of tonnage or truck, how much of the land will be actually removed? So in terms, in terms of the blasting, uh, I believe that the, the intent um, and as, as per written in the conservation, uh, conservation plan, um, the intent is to minimize uh, the, um, uh, uh, the deleterious effects. And so the, the intent is to use those blastings just to, uh, to actually allow for those openings. Um, but you can... I, uh, through your worship to Councilor Patterson, I, if I can just add to that um, um, uh, description, the, I think what you're saying is on-site, not off-site. Is that, is that what I understand? Because there's very little blasting, if, if any, to get through the rock walls in order to facilitate the legal crossings. Okay, so it's on-site you're talking about. Is that correct? Okay, so so whatever the use of the property is in whatever capacity, whether it's two lots or four lots or what have you, it has to go through a building permit process and and it, it, it has to meet the bylaw um, that's currently in place. And I, I, without putting words in staff, so perhaps I direct this question to staff, it, it, um, I believe the new lots would have to go through a um, design current protocol would be to go through a design panel and then back off to council sh uh, when those lots are built on the three remaining lots so it would have to go through another checks and balances at that time where design panel staff and council could weigh back in again um, never notwithstanding it has to meet the bylaw unless there's a requested variance and and without veering off course if there's an hca sorry h CA process, it then would have probably another layer without getting down that road too much. Um, and then lastly, it, should there be a additional request or suggestion that that would be pertaining to the new three lots, it could then again be suggested and um, embedded into the HRA. And I'll leave that question for staff as well. Does that answer your question? Thank you. It's more helpful, yes. Thank you. Anything else, Councillor Patterson, at this time? Uh, okay, I have uh, Councillor Green and then Councillor Zelka. Thank you. Um, my concern is about the blasting as well and about the changes to, proposed changes to the landscape. I've walked the area a lot. I, I'm sure many of us have gone through the area. Um, I need to know what that property will look like after it's been blasted from Prospect Place. That's a really important vantage point, and I don't have a full understanding. I went through the RISAC report on, on the geotechnical a aspects, but it was not very detailed. It wasn't what I would consider a, a really fulsome, more robust um, geotechnical impact study. And I am concerned because there, there are water courses through that wall. I've noticed it's a very wet area, I'm also concerned about the impacts of the blasting for the houses that are below grade across the street and the whole drainage and hydrology of, of the property. I guess I'm, I'm feeling that I, th I think we need a much more detailed um, geodesic impact assessment as well as an environmental impact assessment. Um, those are my, my, my two questions. Would it be possible to arrange for those um, depending on the outcome of tonight's meeting, however. But those are two really important things. And again, I'll refer you to 1.5 of the official community plan, which does talk about two of the five goals are the natural environment to protect and enhance the natural features that make the community environmentally and socially healthy and resilient, including the terrestrial and marine ecosystems, foreshore habits, habitats, creeks, and tree canopies. The other goal is neighborhoods, to sustain the characteristics of Oak Bay's neighborhoods that contribute to a sense of place and attachment to the community. And I think of all the areas 
in Oat Bay at the moment that I have been acquainted with, Prospect Place probably has one of the strongest senses of place. Um, and I think it is the whole context, the whole area that, that speaks to people and, and creates the concerns that we have heard. Um, so I guess I've, I, I'm not clear, I'm sorry, uh, Councillor Patterson, despite your question, what will the property look like post-blasting from Prospect Place? That would be very helpful for, for me to know. Can someone answer that question through you, Chair? Thank you. I think they would have to go to the applicant more than to staff at this point. Unless, Mr. Anderson, you want to answer that? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll begin, I I if you may. I, I think uh, if a four-lot subdivision is approved, and I'm sorry if this is going to be kind of obvious, but there will be four houses on this property. Those houses will require blasting, I assume, for the foundations to be put in place. So um, it's it's if that is in fact what moves <laughs> forward, that's what we will see. What we'll need to address, uh, in particular, is is are the siting <coughs> concerns, and then of course ensuring that the blasting is is minimized. I mean that's that's the reality of the proposal that's before us. And so I, I can't give you percentages. I don't know the size of houses that are being proposed. I can tell you the maximum <coughs> coverages and then scare the beans out of you because that's not likely what we'll see. But the point is, if this is approved, there would be four lots and four houses on those lots, four houses on this property. That's right. Mr. Miller. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through to you, Councilor Green. Um, uh, Mr. Anderson answered it. Uh, quite well. Th this is a land use application, and um, um, it's hard to answer a question when it, it's not known. However, I will say again, in a, in a maybe um, concise way, uh, it, it has to go through, if I'm not mistaken, a design panel process, which goes back to council. So, should council determine at a later date that they're dissatisfied with the current build form or land use despite that of a bylaw that's where it gets weighed in in addition to to design panel and um, and then again notwithstanding that there could be additional uh, um, restrictions or covenants or whatever such as setbacks burdened within the uh, HRA uh, that currently aren't just really quickly touching on uh, hydrology and um, and uh, um, uh, geotechnical. Geotechnical is only required for blasting, and we must meet the current bylaw in Oak Bay. Um, and uh, we currently are working with an internal um, uh, uh, mechanism to exceed that of Oak Bay. And we just kind of threw this together um, in advance of this meeting, and we can we think we can exceed the current restriction to in within Oak Bay bylaw by thirty seven percent of impact, based on um, our best practices. Um, it's it's kind of a last minute item based on reading the letters um, th from just a few days ago. And lastly, I unless I'm mistaken, it's it's by it's um it's uh, the bylaw to retain the groundwater. Um, within the property and collect it and then um, move it out to the storm connection. So we're not allowed to push our um, water essentially from our property onto public property or neighbor's property. Through you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Miller, just, uh, just for clarification, I mean, I, I think it's important to recognize, though, on this lot, if we're coming off of prospect, if the committee or council decided to, to put covenants to push the buildings back. Given the steepness of that lot, it's going to require more blasting in many ways to get driveways into those into those houses. Not not necessarily at all. It not not to be um, contradictory. It really depends on the building form. Like um, there's there's some already built in metrics that would be applicable on the current situation of two lots or the current or the potential future situation of four lots but it really comes back to essentially taking what is the will of committee and embedding that in the HRA so one could drive a steep much like the existing situation that currently exists in some of the pro homes long prospect where there's a big steep driveway that goes up to a home to say a two-story home or there's other situations where it essentially goes to a three-story home with a below grade um 
garage, both existing and prospects. So it would be regardless of what land use would happen without any further restrictions, you'd essentially get a mixture of what you currently see along prospect due to the existing topography that is not dissimilar to our property. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Zelka. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I've got a, a couple of, well, possibly hard questions. I really appreciate staff and appreciate you being here and appreciate that you're uh, open to uh, trying to field these potentially hard questions. Um, I note in, uh, I believe it's in today's Times columnist that um, the District of Saanich was just pushed back on one of their developments uh, that they approved back in January. Uh, they approved a development uh, by an eight to one vote to, um, to build a, um, a building, uh, I think it was going to be four, four story and, uh, and, and the official community plan in that area only said one story. I don't know if you're familiar with this particular um, our article, but the, the court order is what I wanted to quote. And this is, the, uh, this is what the judge wrote uh, telling Sanders to back off and uh, re rethink the development. Bylaws enacted or works undertaken by a municipal council after the adoption of an official community plan must be consistent with that municipality's official community plan. So it seems to me, and uh, I'd like uh, uh, your, um, uh, your, your view on this, please, that this uh, development, this proposal, is not consistent with our official community plan. So the question I would put forward, assuming that uh, that's true, is why is there not an, an OCP amendment uh, going along with this proposal, please? Before you answer that, just to be c clear, the uh, obviously the staff do feel it's compliant with the OCP or they wouldn't recommend it, so that's probably a hard question to answer. Is there a specific aspect of the official community plan that you might just flag for them to comment on a bit more specifically? Uh, well, I, I, I would flag a number of elements that, that were um, flagged actually by many of the, of the letters that came forward um, that helped me to, uh, to, uh, to, to form this question with respect to the many, many areas <coughs> where official community plan, for example, says uh, just a, a simple one, just uh, to, to respect the topography, for example, of a site. Uh, yet this proposal proposes um, a lot of blasting. To uh, to accommodate uh, and to to supersede to um, to ignore the topography of the site. So I would just start with there as as something that is not, in my opinion, uh, in alignment with the with the OCP. All right, this is a tough one to ask. I'll let Mr. Anderson address it. No, I, I think it's actually a, a, actually planners kind of love these questions because not many people really talk about community plans and and the policies and such, but I think it's really, really important in a, in a, in a, in a judicial case that you're, you're sort of quoting to, to really understand what consistent means. And consistent in the context of a community plan is a very complicated question. You really need to be very specific about what you're speaking about in the community plan and what you're speaking about in reference to the community plan. Um, if you have a statement in a community plan that says respect to topography, I think that's a wonderful statement, and uh, we try and deliver that throughout every application approval that we bring forward to councils. Um, so it's a very general statement that if you get into the, the question of consistency in community plans, what you're usually dealing with is a very specific matter in a community plan, and particularly you ask the question about whether or not this requires an amendment to the community plan if it's not consistent. Well, it, it, really would only require an amendment if it's not consistent with the land use designation that's provided in the community plan. Otherwise, you're getting into, again, a, a fairly long list of, of what you measure consistency and what weight you put on that and what, um, what you're referencing when you're, when you're reviewing that. So it's just not something that you take a community plan and, and look at a, a building permit application and, and go, is that consistent with the goal? Apologies if I wasn't in the mic. Is that not consistent with the goal of, of respecting topography? I mean, that's, I've written lots of community plans. Every one of them's got that phrase in there. Every one of them. So uh, when you look at a, a, a lot that you have in front of you and someone's proposing a building on that, are you gonna deny a building permit um, because they're putting a house on a property that has topography. You know, it's what is the value you're putting on that statement in the community plan and how are you transporting that value 
to a property and what lens are you looking at it through? Are you looking at it through a heritage lens, which is the context that we're talking about tonight? Are you looking at it from a, uh, a viewscape lens? Are you looking at it from a, a natural environment lens? And then again, to go back, what is the proposal that you have before you that you're measuring that consistency with? I can tell you we don't run through the community plan on every application and go line by line, is this consistent, is this consistent? We know parts of the community plan speak about motherhood and apple pie. Pardon if that's not politically correct, but that's in fact a lot of what you'll find in sections of community plans. Sections of community plans around development and land use planning are usually fairly specific. And I believe not knowing that case, that's probably what um, that judge was dealing with, was a fairly specific issue of a community plan um, providing a height limitation um, and the zoning bylaw saying something different or the proposal saying something different. And then it's a measure of should you put in specific heights in community plans? And the short answer from a planner's perspective is no. You should be putting ranges in there. Then you don't go to court. If I may can can yeah, please continue with a follow up. Thank, thank you very much. I much appreciate that. Uh, uh, that answer. Um, uh, so uh, let, let me let me sort of try to tease this out a little bit further. Um, um, the the frontage along Prospect Place for this property is 230 linear feet, which, according to our uh, our driveway access bylaw, uh, with about 100 feet per per driveway, uh, um, assuming they uh, assuming they, they they go with what they're entitled to, which would be two lots. Um, at a, that would give them potentially two, two about, uh, uh, theoretically two driveways per each of the two lots. That's independent of this HRA. However, I notice also in the same um, driveway access bylaw, item 17, the grade of a driveway access shall not exceed 15%. I get the impression that unless there's a lot of blasting, it'll be pretty difficult to maintain 15%. Um, grade on some of the proposed um, driveway accesses. So here's the question I have for you. Uh, I, I, I know that the, um, the actual footprint of a house is relatively sacrosanct. If there's a tree in there, a protected tree, if, there's, uh, if we want to do blasting in there, uh, basically if, if someone lays out an actual uh, a footprint of a house, we generally can't do a lot of, a lot of uh, um, uh, control in that area because as the homeowner gets to do what they like to do to a large extent. However, I don't know of that actually being applied to a driveway. So could you please comment on that and also on the 15% um, uh, access and whether that further limits the driveway access, uh, um, uh, theoretical um, uh, versus practical uh, entitlements? Uh, I, the question should probably be directed to, to through me <laughs> as the chair and all trying to find a, a person. I think the, the question of grade is probably just to the applicant of whether or not that exceeds that grade, but I'm, I'm gonna go with, it's a pretty simple yes, no question. Through your, your worship to Councillor Zalka, the bylaw currently says it must not exceed 15%. If it does, it needs to be a sprinkler building. Again, the HRA could embed something in the document to not exceed 15%, hence require the blasting. Notwithstanding that, if there's a protection on a front yard setback, which currently under the RS5 lot, under RS5 zoning type of agreement, it would be, I believe, uh, 25 feet. It could then be exceeded by way of covenant, again, to exceed that, uh, that and not have a driveway that, um, that requires uh, blasting. And lastly, I just want to clarify one point, if I may. Um, there is no application right now for any blasting on any of the three new lots. Again, that would be another discussion at that time. Um, things could be further negotiated and or could be embedded right now in the HRA. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Uh, Mr. Anderson? Well, I was just going to note that there is a, uh, my understanding is a provision to allow for a driveway um, slope to be exceeded to exceed that 15% for a, a certain length. Mm -hmm. um, so the 15% is, is, the, is the requirement and then um, in some stretches of a driveway there's a, an allowance to exceed that, that slope. Um, so I, I apologize if this seems like I'm, I'm asking a question relating to, to land use, but it does reflect on, on the, uh, the approvals for this HRA. Uh, HRA. Um, so just to, to, to clarify, um, 
is, the, is any applicant entitled to do blasting in order to put in a driveway, for example? Or uh, um, uh, I, I know they can probably ask, but are we entitled to say no? Where, uh, whereas, unfortunately, with a house, we probably can't say no. Uh, again, I think I mentioned it earlier, uh, Your Worship, the, um, the blasting is actually a federally regulated process. We basically just are the uh, folks that implement that. So a blasting permit um, for a, a driveway, I don't believe it's any different than a blasting permit for a, a building. Okay, so the only reason I ask that, if through the chair, is, is with respect to the uh, respect <coughs> to the topography, uh, what's referred to as motherhood and apple pie aspect. Uh, so that was just one aspect I was trying to tease out uh, uh, with you, um, uh, with, with staff. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'll probably have more questions later. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll just, if I might extend that question a little bit, because the, not to the specifics, but to the issue of driveways, uh, given this is a heritage revitalization agreement process, a rezoning process, the discussion here would really be more around where the driveway access would come from. If it's coming from the prospect lake, that, that level of detail would typically be dealt with by staff and, and, and bring brought to council. But the broader question of do we want to allow those accesses off of off of prospect and, and, and the impact of that on the wall is really, I think, the, the germane question here. And we can push that back to staff to come up with details if we want to see things change a little bit. I'm just trying to make sure we don't get too far into the weeds because we could be here for a very long time tonight if we're if we're debating the, the nuance of the details and not, not getting to the big questions. Uh, uh, Councillor Braithwaite and then Councillor Patterson again. Thank you, um, through you, Chair. But uh, just, a, just a clarification, there is actually a blasting permit for the approved building right now, the, the building that is approved, is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so I would like to just go back to the report on page six under table four. And, and the reason I want to go back to this is because I heard Mr. Cooper mention this, and it also says this um, right in table four under the existing land use policy. The second bullet point, it says, proposed HCA under review does not apply to in-stream application. And, and Mr. Cooper um, said that it's not uh, about the HCA, um, the, it's about the rules that were in place at the time um, that ap this application has come in. But I think that, in actual fact, the HCA process was started prior to this process. And so, as a good neighbor, I would think, and I'll direct this to the um, applicant, um, that you would take that into consideration, um, that the HCA was actually in process prior to you putting forward your HRA. And so if you could just speak to that and and whether or not you still think that those rules would apply. And as you come to the thing, I'll just point out, like, so the heritage, cons I change hats here a little bit, as I was chair of the Heritage Conservation Area Working Group, um, the intent of the Heritage Conservation Area is to manage that change in that over time. So it, it reflects the heritage, as, heritage uh, identified heritage assets uh, within that area. Uh, there's a statement of significance for the area, and it's intended that, that new development reflect that piece of it. Um, so it would, it would kick in on, on any new developments that went in there, any of, the new, any of the houses, if it's adopted. But I think it's, it is separate from this in the sense that it and the, the, the heritage values that, are, that form that are the same as the ones we should be considering as part of any heritage revitalization agreement. It's really important for us to make sure we don't lose sight of the heritage value that we're trying to keep here uh, as part of this HRA process. And, and that's the reason I bring up the question because, I, to me, it's in the best interest of the community that this application would perhaps take a step back while we are considering the HCA. Uh, Mr. Miller? Thank you, Worship. Uh, through to Councillor Braithwaite, I think you said two two questions, so hopefully um, you keep me on point if I veer off. Um, the Heritage Conservation Area, uh, HCA, in draft form, has a lot of information embedded into it, um, and we believe our application is actually in keeping with the spirit of it. We're designating rock walls. We're, we're um, relocating and designating a carriage home. So in reading the document, we believe we actually do meet the spirit of that, notwithstanding it's in draft form. Um, in addition to that, so and then, of course, the HRA, 
pro, uh, application and proceeding document is a far more strict and rigid document that would supersede that of an H. CA area should it be adopted. Second question to your point was what started first? Um, it, it depends on how you measure it. If you do the process of our application and such officially started the day we, our thoughts of what to do with our property uh, started in the summer of 2016. Um, in the, in the, in the, um, for the risk of sounding a little bit candid, our HC, the HCA process started shortly thereafter. Hence, that's, um, we were, I had a meeting with a couple, three independent neighbors. Um, we're veering a little bit off topic here, but when we purchased two properties on the street and uh, HCA was kind of brought up. To the best of my knowledge, there was no correspondence prior to the summer of 2016. If you want to do another metric, the measurement of of things, um, our official application uh, for the subdivision was applied in October 2016. Sorry, 2017, thank you. Uh, and to the best of my knowledge, there has been no formal application yet uh, for an HCA. Hence, it has to go through count committee, which then recommends the official start working on the bylaw should they proceed. So I think that, ans that answers your question. Um, yeah, but if you just want to stay there, I would like actually to direct one other question. Since you brought it up um, in that um, you're saying that your, the, your HRA is in keeping with the HCA, uh, and I wasn't going to go to the bylaw till later, but I'm going to go to it now, and I'm going to specifically go to um, point 11.2. And in 11.2B, I believe that that's an opt-out clause for the HCA. And to me, the way that is written it allows you to opt out of the HCA at any, any time that you want. And that's a bother to me. That, that is, that's, to me, not in keeping what you just said, with what you just said. I'll, I'll, Mr. Miller, are you familiar with that, that I'm not. Clause? I'm not familiar with that clause. However, if, if I may speak to it, um, unless there's a legal reason. No, no, no. I, and I try to not have the, the commentary from the audience as well, but I think uh, maybe I'll turn it to staff then if, I, if this may be a more appropriate place to go to, because I read the same language and had the same question. So, Mr. Anderson? So, so I will note that um, that that clause was added to this uh, this agreement. To my knowledge, we haven't put that clause into previous HR agreements in, in the district. Um, the clause fundamentally is basically recognizing that through this HRA process and a, and a heritage designation and, and a heritage alteration permit as part of that process that is protecting the heritage features that are identified through the HRA, you don't need to put an applicant through that process again um, to, to protect those features that you've done through the HRA and the subsequent processes that are, are with it. So what it does, and it is a standard clause, just so we're clear, um, and it, it basically says because you've done that through your HRA and the associated approvals, if a subsequent HCA, I'm sorry, H Heritage Conservation Area comes into play, uh, then you don't require another heritage alteration permit uh, for the features that you've protected already in your HRA process. So that's what it's there for. It's to avoid duplication of permitting the same protection respecting <coughs> heritage features. Um, so and having said all of that, um, it is a new clause that I believe our illustrious uh, legal advice provided us in terms of the latest and greatest. Um, if it is something that is of concern, it is basically there to avoid duplication. So it, it is something that could potentially be removed from that agreement. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Um, thank you, and through you, Chair. So that answers one of my other questions is, um, was this developed by our lawyer or their lawyer? Yeah. Our lawyer? We have, we have a standard um, agreement that we use, and then it's modified for the specific characteristics of whatever application is in front of us. So we start with that basic template that is then reviewed by our lawyer. It is then submitted to the applicant for, for their counsel to review the application to make sure that everything is, is cohesive between the two legal counsels. So through you, Chair, so, so their counsel has seen this document? Correct. Thank you. Thank you. I think I just want to make absolutely, so I'm clear on this, the, the wording that's in there, uh, it does not exempt the lands from like the property itself from being part of the heritage conservation area. Because I just, for those of you who aren't familiar, 
the recommendation that's coming through uh, may not be adopted, but the recommendation from the working group is to have a some form of heritage alteration permit process for all properties so that staff have a chance to review the, the development. Um, now, did that, so, the, so if that wording as it stands, it, it sounds like it doesn't apply to, to the property. So is, can you just clarify, uh, confirm that it would, that the, that process would still continue in that situation? You know, uh, when you first said that, I said, yes, you're right. And then as I listened a little bit more to what you said, <laughs> I'm going, um, hmm. Um, so, so that that clause in the, in the in the last portion of it there, it does speak to um, the more general lands as opposed to the specific um, features. So, that that may be a, a, a some wording that that causes us some. Here, if I may, this is the wonderful thing about having a a future uh, an anticipated document coming forward that wants to try and do the same thing as what we would potentially be getting done with respect to heritage protection through this process. But when we move along, cast ourselves forward to the HCA, and we, we, we have that document in front of us as a district, and it says we require a heritage alteration permit for everything that's within this designated area, um, then we look at this document and it says, well, they've already got a HAP for the heritage protection, so they're not required to have a HAP. Let's cast ourselves to the broader question that the Heritage Conservation Area may speak to, and that, I believe, was the intent ar around the working group and company to have um, HAPs for all. And, and there would be a different approach to reviewing HAPs depending on what you're reviewing because they are heritage protection. I'm just going to end it because really we don't have we don't. The that, that process in place. Uh, I think there is, I think, flagged concern about that wording here, though. So we may have to just, if we're doing any, any wording uh, approvals uh, under consideration, I think we probably have to flag that one particular piece for, for review before it goes forward. Uh, I have, uh, sorry, uh, Councillor Braithwaite, anything else? Uh, just one thing, since I'm still in the bylaw, uh, just a, a note for you for housekeeping um, on point nine, it actually says point nine, and then it says 8.1 under point nine, it should say 9.1. Thank you. Um, and I just, I have, uh, Councillor Appleton, do you want to jump in at any point here, or are you, I, I just, we've got a couple people speaking for second time or third time, so I just want to make sure you have a chance to ask questions. Sure, please do it. Through Councilor you, Appleton. your worship, thank you. Um, question to staff. Uh, notwithstanding the comments that have been made by the applicant regarding fee simple lots um, and uh, you know the design of potential access, there is no uh, technical restriction uh, that would preclude the subdivision of the lot uh, while retaining a singular access off of York. Is that correct? Sorry, just to clarify your question. So you're wondering if it is a fee simple lot, fee simple subdivision, that they could still use one access from York Place? No, sorry, just to clarify, d disregarding the fee simple aspect, if we just set that aside for the, for the time being, uh, is there any technical restriction that would preclude the subdivision into four lots with a single access off of York? The, uh, the comment from the applicant was regarding the, the four lots being subdivided, having to be accessed off of prospect for the purposes of fee simple lots, but it is still structurally possible for us to have a subdivision that is accessed through a singular access off of York, correct? There's no restrictions in that regard? You know, without having a site plan in front of me as to what that would look like, that's a difficult one to answer. Um, they still would have frontage, what happens with that access road then depends on whether you're looking at a strata subdivision or whether you're still considering it a fee simple subdivision. Is that driveway based on an easement through a single lot? Does it become a public road? Not an easy question to answer. But structurally, given all those issues being addressed and all those issues being resolved, there's no functional, there, there's nothing that takes that, the idea of subdividing the lot through a single access off of York completely off the table, given if we could address the technical issues that you identified. Mr. Anderson? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, 
it's not something we would normally do. If we have a subdivision in front of us with several lots, we would want those lots to have access directly to the street that they front onto. So, um, you know, there's there's something practical about about your question in terms of my response. Uh, but but also, you know, you know, is it possible to have the existing access service for lots technically? I would say that would be very difficult, and in part because of just the point of um, constructing houses on those lots, gaining access through a 3.2 meter um, driveway for construction equipment and vehicles is, is not likely to be possible. So there's kind of a practical response to that question. And the other point I wanted to make is that uh, a single access point for four lots would require um, a series of easements uh, for driveway access um, in favor of, of the remaining three lots. So just a technical. Councilor Appleton, anything further? Uh, I'm gonna, I actually, Councilor, I have Councilor Patterson and then Green and then I'm gonna ask a couple questions as well before we get into the public. Councilor Patterson. Yeah, I, I guess just coming back to uh, the, the last um, discussion we were having regarding um, that the, the, the way that it reads right now, the application, it provides exemption from further restrictions uh, under an HCA on on development, I'm trying to. I guess I'm trying to balance the community benefit and and the applicant's benefit, um, respecting that you know the applicant has proposed moving the the carriage house to Windsor Park, which is something I think that you know the community um, would like and it, it could work. But if this is then trying to if, if it exempts the the other three lots from um, respecting the intent of the HCA and it moves the carriage house to another location and it substantially alters the land and removes um, parts of the rock wall I'm, I'm just having some difficulty understanding how it qualifies as a heritage revitalization area as compared to a subdivision I think that's a fair question for the applicant to, to, to answer. And maybe it's, uh, you may want to get, no, don't, don't applaud, please. I just, I just want everybody to feel comfortable coming. We have a, a range of opinions coming forward here. Mr. Miller? It, it, through your uh, worship, if I can, can you just repeat the question? In a, in a, sorry, I just want to make sure I, I answer it clearly. The application as it, as it is set out right now and, and understanding that my, that language might change, uh, listening to the last discussions from Mr. Anderson, um, th the way it is, is, the application is set out right now that it provides exemption from any further restrictions under the HCA on development contemplated. So the one, the one dwelling that, that you've worked on right now is already in play. I, I understand that. Um, and you have generously offered to move the carriage house to um, Windsor Park, which could work well for the community. I understand um, that. But if, if the intent then is not to, to have the rest of the development support Oak Bay's intent of an HCA, the, the values of whatever the heritage conservation area are going to be. I, I'm having difficulty understanding, other than moving the carriage house <laughs> and protecting a portion, portion, a large portion of the wall, I'm trying to weigh the benefits to the community of this as a heritage revitalization area, since the carriage house will be gone, portions of the wall will be gone, and the three contemplated dwellings will not be subject to the HCA. How does it qualify as a heritage revitalization area as compared to simply a subdivision? Heritage revitalization agreement. Yeah. Fair yeah, question. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Your Worship. Miller. Through your Worship to uh, Councillor Patterson. The simple answer is I did not know the technical aspects or repercussions uh, thereof of that, of that one clause. It is not our intention um, as neighbors, property owners, to um, avoid or have any special um, uh, permission that um, that would um, exceed or sorry exempt us from the HCA. So for those reasons, I think what you're asking me is we have no problem with removing that HCA um, 
clause, if you will, and go through exactly the same um, process uh, of an HCA area, should it be adopted uh, in exactly the same form or fashion in perpetuity uh, on our property. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Patterson. I have uh, Councillor Green, then I'm going to ask a question, I'll go to Councillor Braithwaite. Thank you. Through you, Chair, to um, Mr. Anderson. Just out of curiosity, which lawyer added the wording that has suddenly created a, a, an issue for us? I, I don't know. Can you answer that question? Do you, or want a, you want a name of the lawyer? Not the name. Oh. I'm sorry, was it? No, I don't want to go that far. Um, was it our lawyer or was it the uh, applicant's lawyer? Out of curiosity. Honestly, this was at a stage where we had passed the agreement on, so I, I could not tell you specifically whether it was on our side or the other side or mutually <coughs> agreed upon. Okay, thank you for the clarity. Thank you. Uh, having Mr. reviewed Cooper. the document and the person responsible for the correspondence back and forth between the two councils, I can confirm that that was in the document when we received it from the district. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess uh, I'll, my question here really comes back, to, I think, to the to the meat of what Councillor Patterson's, and this may be the, the heritage uh, consultants. I mean, I, I'm. It is a heritage revitalization agreement, and so there are heritage values that are sort of the offset of these. I, you know, the the land use, the the subdivision, um, you know, the, the increase in density of the land are not issues that I struggle with. I I, I look at those as their net benefit to the to the applicant. Um, but they don't harm the, the the community so much. But it is an HRA, and so we're looking at. And I look at the the, the heritage merits being asked for, and that the, the continuity of that wall, that 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 sort of very spectacular sort of rock feeling as you're walking along Prospect, um, that are there. Those are all aspects that that could be much better addressed, frankly, if if you could keep the access off the other side and kind of keep that visage and keep the houses on the top of the bluff. Um, we're losing. I mean. The, the statement, the guidelines for heritage preservation are quite clear that you want to keep heritage assets in their location. And I, I think this body would be quite willing to keep the carriage house on that location if we could find a way to do it and give some other gives, frankly, as a community for that that purpose. Um, but I, I, I struggle like Councillor Patterson did. We're, we're taking, we're putting a bunch of holes in, a, in an old heritage wall. Uh, and we're and we're removing the one heritage building that's there, and so for a her usually if you're doing it in an HRA, you sort of expect to keep those heritage assets intact and in place, and then provide the give in the sense that you're you're allowing the some some more additional pieces to that piece. So I'm just I'm struggling a little bit with with that heritage, you know, give on this one, and, and perhaps I think perhaps Mr. Miller or, or or somebody else could just address that that particular heritage aspect of it. Sure. Um, thank you, Your Worship. So, uh, again, um, without belaboring the the the, the discussion, we kind of uh, us as applicants, myself and my wife Rebecca, look at it in in, in two two lights. Uh, un, unable to completely um, uh, um, use professional uh, experience as well when I'm looking at something. There is a there is a a, a, re, a, a true uh, earnest reason as to why we truly feel this is the best land use for the for the um, best configuration of the land use, assuming one would um, accept council would accept a increase in density beyond to that as a right lots. So putting that aside, um, and we we can certainly go back to that map for context. We feel as though the context is appropriate. For more than just two large lots, um, the the um, again we have three hundred and twenty odd feet of frontage along Prospect. The Prospect rubble wall in the picture here you can see is not in the most um, uh, glorious state, albeit we do value that as property owners as well. And for those reasons, we are um, pleased to say that you know only a small percentage of that wall. Is affected, and it's very common to have modifications in a heritage negotiation far more um, uh, um, far far more drastic than this. We're we're literally talking about a few crossings, that of which would already be um, on the table if the buildings were built and fee simple. So, for example, if the fee simple lot 
on the northerly side was built uh, if the wall was capped by the by the um, owner, um, it would be entitled to have two crossings already because so, there'd be no way to access that property should that be applicable. Uh, the second uh, of it is we weigh out the heritage values. We, we, we're very fond of the York Place wall and with a single family dwelling entrance, access egress, it's reasonable to get a small concession as to what would be appropriate from an engineering perspective. We're happy to do that um, by way of leaving that granite wall. If that granite wall was deconstructed, it would be a challenge to put it back together, albeit over time it would patina and it would be reasonable. With the Prospect Place wall, it's already been um, modified in a previous slide we've shown where there's been a gate put through it um, with some granite columns. So, you know, with supervision, we're very, very confident that this could be modified. Uh, and again, it, it's it's something that it's that it's a certainty between us and Oak Bay and the neighborhood of how to how to manage the walls. Lastly, the carriage house. Um, to be totally frank, I had no idea that it might be um, uh, emotional to some uh, when we when we originally put in a, a demolition permit of the um, gazebo and the and the carriage house, which you can see in the picture is is seen better days uh, for a number of years. Um, it was actually overgrown and not seen from the street. So one of the heritage values is to um, sort of uh, present heritage back to the community. Um, we, we, it's really a garage with a garden suite above, or I don't know what the technical term would be, but, um, we, um, we would rather see it, uh, moved off site, which is a very common thing again in, in heritage, um, mitigation and move it to a place where it could be enjoyed by many. That is certainly a more extensive and more expensive route, but, um, on balance, again, we feel as though by relocation of the, of the carriage house, sizable investment designated in perpetuity, and then not impacting the York wall in any way and um, uh, re restoring the prospect place wall, as you can see, it's still, it's even missing pieces in a sensitive way. I think all those things are reasonable on, on balance from our perspective. Okay. Again, there's, as the last thing, there's many things that came up tonight that could be added to the HRA if they were, um, modest and it could be addressed. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Braithwaite and then Councillor Green. Thank you. I have three quick questions. Um, Mr. Anderson, you were talking about, um, and through you, Chair, um, about uh, a, a, an opening of 3.2 metres for construction vehicles to go through. Is that the, the opening of the York Place one? And, and I think you said that it would be difficult for all of the construction vehicles to go through that 3.2 meter opening. Is that is that correct? Is that what I heard? Uh, that's my understanding. Uh, the applicant can perhaps confirm or deny uh, my understanding. Okay, that's so just just because if they're not going through that opening, which opening they're going through? Because if they can't fit through a 3.2 meter opening, then I'm not sure which of these other openings they could fit through. So it, that would be a really good thing to address, I think. Uh, Mr. Miller, I'd probably put that question to you if you... Fantastic. For constructability, I think your question... Are you referring to... Through your, uh, your, your worship for constructability, um, Councillor Braithwaite? So for all of the construction vehicles that will be coming onto the property, which Understood. access will they I be using? Your, yeah. I understand your question. Um, um, small pedestrian vehicles, pickup trucks, uh, uh, cars not really a problem coming off of York. That's not a big problem. It's any form of equipment, um, excavators, um, trucks, all that sort of stuff. It's absolutely inevitable that unless, you know, it, it's, it's, it's geometric. It's impossible to get through York. We've, we've demonstrated it just because it's come up. It's impossible to get through York. So either regardless of what happens on this property, regardless of how it gets done, whether it's, two lots for it doesn't matter. It has to either widen the opening onto York or we need to bring an opening in off a of prospect. When now when you open up when you dismantle a wall, often by hand, you're you're exceeding the wall width a little bit in order to reconstruct the column. So you can't just cut a wall straight off. You have to dismantle the rocks a little bit. That's called the rough grade or your rough opening. And then you'll put it back in a finished opening and you'll protect the rocks uh, on site through the process. 
So the construction vehicles will be coming off prospect through a wider opening than what is on the plans, showing on the plans right now. The pedestrian vehicles will likely come off of York, but the wider vehicles will have to service off a of prospect unless we were to open up the York Place wall to a greater degree. Okay, and while we're on the York Place wall, just because, um, and through you, Chair, one more question about uh, that. The, I'm looking for the gates from the York Place wall. What happened to the gates from the York Place wall? Because those were, to me, and if we're looking at um, heritage, those were a part of this heritage that you're trying to preserve. And to knowingly take those those gates away when you knew that you were going to be coming and asking for a heritage um, revitalization area on that wall is confusing to me. Sure, I'm happy to answer that question through, through, through you, uh, Your Worship. The gates that were that were on the prospect, I think you're referring to the gates on the prospect, sorry, the York Place frontage, they were, in my opinion, falling off the building. So what we took, as they were getting opened and closed regularly, we took them off and we actually gave them to somebody to use. If we had to get them back, we could get them back. If that's really a deal breaker, we could get them back. However, we didn't see any value in gates that were twi tied together with twine and, and such. But again, if that's the if that's the thing that that um, if that's the one item that that um, that you feel as though is is a really important facet, we certainly could um, get them back. Um, th thank you, through you, Chair. Um, I think that it's just interesting that they were talked about in the statement of significance, and and yet. They're not there anymore, but that's that's what it is. Okay, my last question is um, on. Oh, sorry, on Schedule Six, the Rockwall plans. Um, I was I'm just a little bit confused, so maybe you can clarify this for me. The last sentence says um, the or the second last sentence says the new crossings total 15.8 or 51.4 feet in length and represent 16 percent of the total wall length. Are you talking about the three new crossings or all four of the crossings would be the 51.4 feet? Because if it's only the three, then those numbers would be incorrect, I would think, perhaps, Mr. Cooper. Chair. Through your worship, I'll, I'll turn that question over to Adam, who did the technical review of this data. Thank you. Sure. Through your worship to Councillor Braithwaite. <clears throat> um, there's a number of ways you can calculate the openings in the wall, whether you include the one approved through the building permit or if you're only speaking about the three as a part of the HRA. The three as part of the HRA are three meters in width each. And so a total of nine meters across that frontage, which based on my math worked out to 88% of that wall remaining in place. If you are to add the uh, crossing from the approved building permit, which I want to say is 3.8 meters off the top of my head, mm -hmm. uh, then obviously that number would go down. So it's really a question of which way you're measuring it. And for the purposes of the presentation tonight, I presented it as the three openings that were associated with the uh, proposal that's in front of you tonight but I thought it was important in the package to speak to this is how we intend to address all of the openings through the construction process that they would be designed to match the uh, gate that's existing today. Thank you, and through you, Chair. So the number that's here, um, that, that says 84% of the wall remains in their condition, in the original condition. That's the correct number in that includes the four I believe openings. that's correct, yes. Yep. Thank you. I, I don't... I don't have the math in front of me right now, so, but yes, I, I think that is correct. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Green. Yes. Thank you, and I'll, I'll try not to take too long. This is following on the comments of both um, Councillor Patterson and the Mayor and Councillor Braithwaite. Um, in the Statement of Significance, uh, the heritage value of this property the Annandale Rock Walls are valued for their connection with one of the most historically significant houses in Oak Bay. Excuse me, Annandale. And at the end of that heritage value statement, the design of the main house, carriage house, and rock walls reflects the nature of country estate, residential development in Oak Bay at the end of the 19th century. So there is huge value, and I wanted to take exception with a comment that the consultant made with all due respect, and that was, uh, that we should not be subservient to heritage and history. However, I believe that the endurance of heritage and history is what matters. 
And this property in particular, because it is so significant, um, has an, a history of in, endurance. And I don't think the community has a history of subservience to, that, to, to this property. So that's just my, my point on that one. So I'm just going to go quickly to um, the Heritage 4.7 section of the official community plan. Community health and resilience heritage, protecting the natural heritage landscape and social values of retaining history. And then to heritage ob objectives, 4.7.1, conserve Oak Bay's history and heritage, conserve established neighborhoods and streetscapes, and conserve natural landscapes. So in fact, the official community plan is not very vague on, on the issue of heritage. I think it's pretty clear. And I think that there is significant history and heritage with this property, and I do appreciate uh, everything that's been done to date. I also appreciate um, the, uh, the, the, some of the things that the applicant is willing to do. It, it is much appreciated. But the significant heritage value of this particular property includes the carriage house. And so I believe in one of Donald Luxton's comments, he said that the, that, that, that the best and most ideal situation would be to restore and retain this carriage house in situ, which means on site. So if we remove the house from the property, we remove one of the heritage values from the property. And, and so this just follows along the, you know, the same concern I have, that um, what are the community benefits? What is the public interest in this particular application? And these are very, um, very concerning. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Green. Uh, Councillor Zalka wanted to have another question, uh, and then I really do want to get to the audience as well to have some, some input. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Um, so my question goes back to um, uh, applicability, and I guess the word would have to be consistency with the OCP, um, since um, uh, it seems to me that uh, we're, we're being measured, uh, our staff is being measured, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the public expects uh, uh, what is espoused within the policy document known as the Official Community Plan. You've already heard from some other, uh, uh, some of my other, my other colleagues, uh, um, uh, some of the items that were brought forward, that this proposal, uh, this heritage revitalization agreement, um, does not seem to be in alignment. Um, I, I just want to raise my, my worry that uh, that this may, I, I'm, I'm worried that if we proceed with this, this may raise a potential <coughs> legal concern. So. So uh, not, uh, wanting to avoid that um, uh, when the time comes uh, to, to ask for, for, uh, for um, either further renegotiations or further work, I'm hoping maybe a possible legal opinion could be derived uh, from um, an Oak Bay lawyer, Oak Bay uh, um, uh, hired lawyer to, uh, uh, to touch upon this question of consistency uh, uh, with respect to this bylaw moving forward, or if it moves forward, appears to be out of step with what is the vision that the public has asked us to try and, and actually um, um, fulfill. Um, and briefly, it seems to me that uh, uh, the OCP in particular, I noticed that sort of, for example, section uh, 4314, it makes specific reference to new housing, and not necessarily renovations, but new housing, such as this one, integrates with the character of existing neighborhoods. New housing is, in many aspects of our OCP, highlighted to differentiate from a renovation p uh, a, a situation or a heritage situation. The new housing must adapt to what we have in, in, in situ. Uh, so section uh, 4314, this, uh, this proposal appears to be out of step. Uh, already mentioned was section 4713. Uh, or conserve natural landscapes. I, um, uh, with respect to that, I'd like to ask uh, a question through you, Chair, specifically to staff and the, uh, the building permit that's currently there uh, appears to show a driveway uh, entering, pro entering the, the lands from Prospect Place. This is the, 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 the one that's referred to as approved versus the three uh, potentially additional. But the lands that it's proposing to enter the property in has what appears to be a 50% grade. Uh, the lands raise about six meters at that spot um, for the, uh, the extent of that particular driveway. How is it possible that we could 
uh, we, especially no, noting that we can't really uh, prove uh, have a driveway greater than 17% grade, approve something that appears to be 50% grade unless it's to ignore the OCP, ignore the fact that new housing must, um, must abide by the, 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 the topography um, and simply allow, allow uh, blasting to proceed. Notwithstanding, blast bl blasting is regulated by the feds. Got it. I'm talking about the regulations within Oak Bay having to do with our OCP. A question through you to staff, please. Okay. I think I understand the question. I'm not entirely sure. I, there was a lot there. I, I think the question was, can we request a legal opinion, a review of the legal opinion on this? Is that is that? No, well, actually, no, I'll, I'll get there eventually when we come up with the various uh, questions we may I, have. If you can make a end. succinct question. The succinct to question staff. has to do in particular with that uh, uh, driveway that apparently was approved. How is it that a driveway can be approved where the grade is closer to 50% and our bylaws talk about 17% unless there's an assumption I'll that I'll just ask the question, is the, I mean, is this, at the end of the day, I'm not going to go through and redo the calculations. Is that calculation gone through with engineering or building staff to calculate the, the grade as part of the building permit application? I, I'm looking at Mr. Miller here. I, I'm just I'm, I'm assuming he's built a lot of houses. He's got, yeah. he's done this. He, he's within the he notes whether he's in the, within the bylaws. But Mr. Anderson. Yes. Yeah, so we obviously have to approve driveway access in accordance with our bylaws, and so that was the case. So it is in compliance with the bylaw. <laughs> That's my understanding, yes. Okay. So I, I hear you say that, um, uh, through your chair, respectfully, that it's in, co in compliance with, um, with uh, the, the access, uh, the, 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 the bylaws with respect to every 30.5 meters. Got it. I'm not talking about that, that provision of the bylaw. I'm referring, referring in particular to provision 17 and also with respect to the OCP having to be um, where new development has been singled out to... Um, to uh, a higher standard with respect to topography uh, respecting, uh, heritage respecting, um, uh, element uh, 4211. Encourage all, again, new development and redevelopment to respect and enhance Oak Bay's sense of place through sensitive, innovative responses to existing form and character. <coughs> so relating to that one, I don't see too many um, uh, what's been referred to as a canyon, potentially a canyon, being, being blasted out of a very <laughs> steep rock face. Uh, that doesn't appear to be sensitive. If it's I, certainly innovative. So the I question is, how does this uh, align with the policies of OCP? Perhaps, is this, a, is this this area where council interprets the OCP in our decision making, or is this a specific enough that staff get to, to that piece? Well, I think in terms of all council's deliberations with respect to land use and development applications, you you need to make reference to the community plan and take your interpretation of how that applies to what you see. And I can't speak to to uh, something as specific, in my opinion, as a, a driveway grade relating to integrating uh, with, you know, new housing integrating with neighborhoods. I mean, it's... One's a very high level, and so you work at the details of whatever you have in front of you, and, and you say, does it meet all of our bylaws? And then you also take that lens of, of does, it, does it fit with our understanding of what that means in this context? And you look at that in the context of the subdivision. You look at that in the context of approving um, houses on lots in subdivisions as well. So I think it really, uh, uh, Your Worship, is what you said at the beginning. Yeah, I think we have to assume that the bylaws are, are enforced by the staff, and we, I'd like to get this table to decide what we want as part of the as part of the heritage revitalization agreement and what we see as, see as acceptable without getting quite that level of detail, if we can. So, Councilor Zolka? Uh, I'll, I'll follow through on, on my final point here. Again, we're uh, touching on, on where it appears to be a dissonance, in, in, my, in, my, in my view, uh, mm -hmm. with our official community plan and the policies put forward by that document. Uh, element 4213, retain existing trees, other vegetation, natural features, and topography where possible as a reflection of Oak Bay's character and for environmental values. So maybe the key word I would ask staff is, is, is the key word there where possible uh, with respect to a driveway uh, such as not only this one, but potentially at least one more of the three that are being proposed that are on quite, shall we say, steep slopes. 
Um, Mr. Anderson, I feel like we're getting into sort of some technical arguments for, I, I, for driveways we, that are... Your Worship, I think we are, but I think I want to make it very clear that we have a whole set of processes associated with approving development, and it, it does begin with the vision and the policies contained in the community plan, but as we go through our processes, we as staff and council, uh, when asked for approval, um, apply those as we go through. So. You know, we're, we're down to basically building permit and driveway access approval. So we're, we're technically a long ways into the process relative to where the community plan started. You're still looking to the community plan for guidance. And when you're looking at that where, where possible, what that basically is in there for is to, to reflect there may be conditions otherwise that don't allow you to fully meet the intent of that, that policy piece. And that's really what the where possible speaks to thank you final point if i may please sure, sure. so uh, uh forgive me for uh, for lingering on this point but uh, uh the, the the proponent um uh, uh made a point in uh in their presentation that they were entitled to four driveway accesses with respect to simply li lineal distance of frontage and i would challenge that and I would, I would worry that uh that this might be challenged with respect to our official community plan and it's uh, higher standards that it appears to place for new development. Um, thank you. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Uh, I do want to go to the audience here and get some some comments and pieces. So we do have a lot of uh, correspondence, and I will uh, uh, will assure you that if you've written to us before 3 p.m. today, we have received it and we have read it. Um, so I'm asking people not to read out letters they've already submitted them. But if you want to come up and just highlight a couple of key points. I think that's a really uh, a good use of time, and uh, and perhaps if there's questions, if we can just uh, get to those questions reasonably quickly, we'll try and get those answered by staff. I, w I will say that we still have the broader question here of whether or not the four lot subdivision for the for the heritage benefit that we're getting out of this has sort of been broadly considered by this table, and we have to get back to that question. Um, and I think that's a pretty big question. If it hasn't, then we may have to give some cl some clear direction to what we would see as as reasonable benefit. Thank you. We so with that, we uh, stretch. <laughs> <laughs> if people want to stand up and please and stretch, that's, that's fine. We've been here for two hours. But I am going to keep this going because I do want to get through this uh, at, at some reasonable timeline. Okay. So okay, if I could just get ones. people to, as okay. you come forward, to use your name and your... You go first, Ronald. Shall I go now or wait until people oh, let's stretch? Let's let people stretch and sit down again, and then we'll, we'll get going. Thank you. <laughs> Please introduce yourself with your name and, uh, and your, just your municipality that you live in is yeah. fine. I'm Bronwyn Taylor. I live in Oak Bay, and I'm the current chair of the Oak Bay Heritage Commission. Um, I was out of town for the November meeting, but I, before going, I discussed with members of the commission the values using the list that we had in our 2013 agreement to review and discuss the various heritage features of York Place and spent considerable time walking around the area in order to make an informed decision concerning the impact that the HRA would have on the neighborhood. And so at this time, since I was not at the meeting, I'd like to have Robert uh, Taylor, who chaired the meeting, address you. Thank you, Welcome Robert Mr. Taylor, uh, living in Oak Bay. Uh, I was the acting chair of the commission when this uh, matter came before it in November. Uh, I'll be very brief. Uh, basically, we, uh, uh, we took the five heritage values, uh, streetscapes and neighborhoods, historic buildings and structures, cultural landscape, especially natural landscape and uh, Oak Bay's unique history. Uh, we then took the, the, uh, the values and we, we compared them to the, H, to, the, to the application and we compared each one. And in our deliberations and can making that comparison, not opinion, but do they, do, do they meet the goals and the values of Oak Bay as laid out in the Heritage Plan? Uh, we felt they didn't. They did not meet, uh, mesh with those goals. Uh, consequently, we made a uh, recommendation uh, to uh, uh, decline the, uh, uh, the request. 
Uh, we understand that you, you have minutes, but they're draft minutes. They're draft in the sense that they haven't been approved. Uh, they will be amended and approved tomorrow. Although they're draft, the, the, um, the heritage values are embedded in the minutes, and the resolution in the minutes is accurate. So you can, but there will be some, some, should I say, strengthening of the minutes uh, tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. And I'm Pat Wilson, and I'm the one that filled out the form and read it out at the meeting about our heritage values and made the resolution. So I'm looking at everything I hear tonight, what we went through at the meeting, and I think what's really missing here is an accurate, holistic statement of significance that covers the whole piece of property. You are looking at subdividing that property. It contains these heritage features. You need a statement of significance that covers the whole thing. And for the purposes of the new counselors and people in the room, this is how we document our heritage assets against our heritage values. So we do have these heritage values. They were developed in 2013, approved by council, and we were asked to use these values. Not only that, these heritage values are also embodied in the OCP. So we stand here at having real oomph behind it. This is embedded in the whole thing. Um, so we are looking at this whole thing. We spent a lot of time walking around the streets, looking at what was around. We reviewed the heritage um, statement of significance for the HCA for potential... Um, the, for the potential heritage conservation area, asked questions and compared what we learned to our heritage values. Missing, to you, missing from the statements of significance supplied in your documentation is consideration of the heritage features of the streetscapes and neighborhoods and the natural landscape features of this property and the area. The need to protect these heritage features is included in the official community plan. When our plan was done, the community responded that streetscapes and neighborhoods was the most important heritage value. Prospect Place has a rural ambience, ambience, particularly at the point of the Prospect Granite Rubble Wall. The natural topography and rock outcroppings continue from Gibson House through the property down to Rattenberry Beach. Houses in this area, throughout that whole area, I should say, not just a long prospect, are built on the land. They are not pushed into the land and blown up all around them. The commission felt that the rock outcroppings, topography, and the rural aspect around the wall on prospect were the critical assets that required protection. The issue of the carriage house being restored is a distraction from the real heritage issues. Restoration means moving it away from its history, out of context, and therefore of a lesser heritage value. The restoration of the granite wall on York is well appreciated by us. But what is offered otherwise? Massive blasting for the proponent's home and underground parking for six cars under a building permit already issued, more blasting on the new lots when developed breaks in the prospect wall such that it would be pieces of the wall designated, and a substantial destruction of the rural ambiance due to the new driveways, construction traffic, blasting ramifications on the roots of anything growing. Every drive driveway represents blasting of the rock outcroppings. A 20% loss on the fence is probably, what, 30 40% of blasting of the rock outcroppings behind that opening on the fence. A significant loss of natural landscape features. And what is the collateral damage on the rural aspect of Prospect Road itself? A bumpy, curvy road that shows its age. Will the area lose its quirky ambience? You know, this is part of the charm of the byways of Oak Bay. Based on this, the commission voted unanimously to recommend council decline this proposal and continue negotiations to improve the protection of the heritage features noted above. 
you are looking at the same heritage protection presented to the commission, even though a lot of the documentation has been changed. This to us is an end run using the noise of restoring the carriage house to get a subdivision without applying for a rezoning. If you really think there should be a subdivision, don't use heritage as an excuse. This is not a heritage revitalization agreement. As far as we're concerned, this is a heritage demolition, demolition agreement. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Hello, I'm Stuart Stark. I'm a, a 909 Woodhall Drive. For 35 years, my family <laughs> lived on Prospect Place. Um, I grew up there, and um, for a further 27 years, I lived on Hampshire Road and designated our restored and designated a house there. I'm a heritage consultant for 35 years. Um, I'm one of less than 12 um, people who have received the British Columbia Heritage Award um, over the years. And I will, I will acknowledge that Don Luxton is another one. Um, I'm this document, the standards and guidelines for the conservation of historic places in Canada has been quoted a lot in the information that you have received. The first 29 pages all concern themselves with do not destroy, do not move. And I think that's really significant. At no place in this document are there any um, guidelines for relocating buildings. The, the, first, and the first standard for general standards for all projects is to conserve the heritage value of a historic place do not remove, replace, or substantially alter its intact or repairable character-defining elements. Do not move a part of a historic place if its current location is a character-defining element. The carriage house, first noted in my book on Oak Bay's heritage buildings from 1986 and with later revisions, mentions the carriage house as part of the original Annandale estate. A previous council has designated heritage the Annandale, the original Annandale house. This part was not done at the same time because it was a separate piece of property. That doesn't mean that it isn't any more important. The context of the carriage house in sight of the original house is, I believe, unique in Oak Bay. And it's darn near unique in Greater Victoria. And it's one of the earliest from 1897-98 by a significant architect, John Gerard T. Arks. Um, some time ago, I mean, long time ago now, when you've been doing this for 35 years, you, you've, you get history within your own career. This all started off in the Heritage Conservation Act, established by Sam Balfe. Heritage protection was then folded into the Municipal Act, and it was recognized at that point that we as people who wanted to conserve heritage needed tools. We can't just say, oh, that's pretty, fix it up. One of the elements in the toolbox was heritage revitalization agreements, and they are a tool for negotiation. What they generally are doing is, if you have a house downtown, for instance, which is designated heritage or should be designated heritage, and somebody comes along and says, we want to do something on this property, the, the applicant negotiates with the heritage planner, and they can say, well, you know, normally we have to be 25 feet or 40 feet from the back lot line, but if you preserve this, we can relax the setbacks under a heritage revitalization agreement. A heritage revitalization agreement is not meant to cart something off to another location to make it convenient for redevelopment. That's not its point. Its point is to 
change a use perhaps from residential to commercial to enable more income to flow through to support the heritage re um, restoration. So there's a number of tools and a number of pieces of negotiation that can be used to preserve things on site. I would suggest looking at this that it's currently zoned R2, allowing for two houses on that property. If you allow two houses on that site, you reduce the impact. You keep more of the topography, you keep more of the heritage values. That reduces any impact of, of a new house right up against the, the, the carriage house, gives them more breathing space. And I would suggest that council designate the walls and designate the carriage house to be in line with the designation of Annandale next door. Then deal with the changes through heritage alteration permits and that would include any potential um, damage to the, to the stone walls. So rather than talking about the icing on the cake, talk about the cake. Talk about the big package and what you're looking at. What is the intent of a heritage conservation area? What is the intent of the official community plan in regards to pr protecting topography and protecting heritage? Work back from there. And if you are negotiating a heritage revitalization agreement, make sure that the community benefits from it. Because this is no benefit to heritage, and it is the wrong use of this tool. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Stark. Welcome, and just again, your name and uh, municipality, please. I shall. Angus Matthews. Uh, eight uh, 1587 Clive Drive, just close by. Um, this is just the beginning of a process, and I think we're getting a long way down into the weeds, and Council has asked some wonderful uh, questions and detailed questions, I must say. But we are really just at the beginning of a process, and it's only in the last four days that we've been able to look at the details of what's proposed, and so it's come on us a, a little fast. And uh, I must say... I'm very, very surprised, and I really feel for staff in this situation. I'm very surprised it's gone so far down the track in terms of bylaws and, and uh, details, and it's actually even scheduled to, for possible approval in, on the same day. We need time to work this through. And I think that's a really important thing for us to grasp, is that we're being asked to get a hold of a big idea here in a hurry, and that's not a good way to make a good idea. I think the other thing we have to acknowledge at the outset is uh, the proponent is entitled to have their house. Uh, it's their property. It conforms ent entirely with it. Uh, as I understand it, the building permit that's been issued, that is already their entitlement. And really, as the mayor has indicated, that's not the issue here. But the real issue, and Stuart Stark said it way better than I, is that the HRI is a tool, or sorry, the HRA is a tool ideally suited for negotiations about heritage values, not a tool for subdivision. And in fairness to staff, this is their first opportunity for guidance. And boy, do they need it. I really feel that they've taken us off in a direction here that is not compatible with heritage and is not compatible with community expectations. And what I think has happened, and we've seen evidence of it here tonight, is we're dealing with one of Victoria's best developers. He has uh, great skill in his team. They've been very effective, these beautiful buildings that he's shown us that they're able to do. We're dealing with a developer that really can bring creative solutions to the problem. But what we fail to do is communicate to the developer what the values the community has that we want the developer to help us salvage, save, preserve, and I think the developer has looked at it from a subdivision point of view or through that lens and not through the heritage lens. But it's not too late. I really think that it's the proposed HRA is incredibly generous to the developer and it really shortchanges the community interest. And I think we have a chance to still send this back. Uh, option two in the staff memo that you've been uh, provided is to send it back for more renegotiation. 
But you know, renegotiation is not going to work unless council gives staff some clear direction. And I know, Mr. Mayor, that's your intent this evening is to get an idea of what kind of clear direction should go back to the staff. And I think another thing that's rather important is you, that's your best option. Re, re, although some of you might come to think we should just refuse this application, I think you're better to work with it. I think you're better to give the, uh, the, one of the best developers in the community an opportunity to come up with a much better idea than the first one he's brought forward. I also think you need to support staff to allow them to push back, frankly, and allow them to be true champions of the issues that the community values. And so what will happen is anybody that might actually say they support this current proposal, anybody here tonight that may actually say that, you know, I really think they'd probably like an even better proposal too. So I don't think you have a divided community. I think you have a community that actually wants the very best for what could be done. So what might, like that, might that look like? And I'll just leave this with you briefly. I'm trying to go back up to a, a sort of the, the sky level, if I may. And just to be clear, the property is RS2 zoning. There is an error in your memo on page two. It actually says RS4, but it has RS2 throughout the rest of the document, just so there's no confusion. The existing uh, lot uh, for the existing building permit occupies 45% of the area of the property. Uh, that means that all that's left is 55% to figure out what happens with as part of the negotiations. The um, proponent, as we've heard tonight, is very interested in heritage and doing his part, but he's also very interested in being a good neighbor. This is his own house or their own house. I'm sorry, I should acknowledge Rebecca is actually the proponent. So I do think that we need to use, accept that they're coming at this with goodwill and take that opportunity to make this a better agreement. So the pillars of a balanced agreement from my point of view and guidance for staff that you may wish to consider, one, put the heritage back in the HRA. Two, protect all existing stone walls intact with one entry. For construction purposes, yes, some, uh, the, a driveway may have to be opened up. In fact, one has already been approved. It looks like Mr. Miller's driveway is going to be the access for all the construction equipment for the entire project, including new lots, if there are any. Three, retain the 1898 carriage house on the property. Stuart said it better than I. Mind you, in, in fairness to the developer, Let's let them have a creative use for the carriage house. It might become Oak Bay's most extraordinary laneway housing. I mean, we could be really creative. Why don't we offer them that? And frankly, if Abstract is going to spend all that money restoring it down at uh, Windsor Park, why don't they restore it on the property and sell it to some happy owner for the future? I mean, it really should stay on the property and Abstract can actually recover some of their costs. We've talked about the OCP a lot this evening. Council's brought that up. I'm very glad to see that. I'd have to say that the report is very weak on the OCP at this point. I also think we need to allow the proponent to have the family home of their dreams. After all, that's where they started, and the permit has already been issued for that. But I think we should also consider allowing them the appropriate number of revenue lots to help pay the bills. That's what they're asking for. Two lots might be enough. One lot they could have right away. But frankly, they're, what they're doing by occupying 45% of the property themselves, they're squeezing the rest of the lots. So the other option is they might like to throw their property back into the mix. And if they would like to come back with a plan that actually reconfigures the entire property to get the single gate access, to get their property included, and to also be able to uh, uh, deal with the carriage house in situ, then we probably have something that everybody could like. And I think that's where we should be headed, and this is the kind of direction I would really encourage staff to be uh, instructed to look into in detail. And the other thing I will say is, you know, when I look at the job staff has ahead of them, I really hope that you give them the resources they need to be able to do this. I really feel that we're understaffed still, even though we finally have a planner. I really think that uh, you're asking a heck of a lot of staff. When you look simply numerically, look at the, the workforce that's brought in here by the proponent and look at the workforce we've got, I really feel for them and I hope you give them the full support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Welcome. 
Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, Michael Prince. I live at 1525 Prospect Place. Um, just a personal reflection for a moment. It was almost two years ago this week that I appeared before the previous council, uh, December 2016, and I gave a 20-minute presentation on the vision of a heritage conservation area entitled to retain this beauty. And that was a quote from Francis Rattenbury when he was Reeve for one year of Oak Bay, that he ran as Reeve in order to retain the beauty of this municipality. He was worried about the development pressures back in 1912, 1913. War came along and the pressures disappeared. Anyways. Uh, so we've been at this a long time. I, previously to that, I presented in October 2016 uh, to, to Oak Bay Council. Is that a little better if I'm speaking? Okay. Um, in the presentation by the applicant uh, and then with this, with this, Mr. Cooper spoke of the 120-year history of uh, change to this property and to this area. Uh, and no doubt there has been a lot of change in that area and neighborhood. Uh, and it's change that... Uh, both Rattenbury and Tiarks envisaged in terms of development and residential growth in that area. But there's also, and I'm glad to hear Councillor Green mention this, there's been 120 years of what you called endurance or constancy. There's been the consistency of 120 years of those walls. Those granite walls have endured for 120 years. The Art Nouveau art iron gates until very recently endured for 120 years. The rock outcroppings, the natural topography and natural landscape has continued to be proud and endured for 120 years. The carriage house, looking a little wet worn. Who wouldn't after 120 years outdoors? But it's still there. And the rural character of Prospect Place has endured for 120 years. And all of that's happened without any heritage protection. Until recently, we're now concerned about the future of these assets. And to me, the perverse irony of this heritage revitalization agreement is that it's the threat. The HRA being presented to you is the danger. After 120 years of almost benign neglect and happy drift, these things have endured. We now have a proposal where these are under danger. The rock walls, certainly the prospect place wall, is under danger of being massively impacted. The Art Nouveau iron gates were given away. The rock topography, you've asked many questions about the blasting, and we've asked many questions. And let's be clear, if we'll just talk about the one property that's been per permitted, there is no doubt there will be substantial destruction to that natural topography never mind what other subdivision may be granted. The carriage house is now being presented as something, and I've never heard this before, moving it to Windsor Park, serving a heritage value called greater public prominence. I don't think you'll find that in the national standards and guidelines of the conservation of historic places, moving historic buildings to somewhere else for a better view. So, we have concerns about this. We'd like to uh, ask council to direct staff to work harder on this. And I think Angus Matthews just spoke very well about the, the specifics. Um, I, I wanted to just uh, talk a bit about two or three things quickly. Uh, one was the, 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 the report before you by the planning manager, uh, which supports the application in principle. And it does so basically in addressing two questions. And it, the answers for both are in the affirmative, obviously. The first question is, does this application satisfy the official community plan? And the answer they tell us is yes. I think we've heard some other alternative perspectives on that tonight. The second question is, is the proposal contextual with the surrounding neighborhood? Again, the report says yes, it is. These answers, in my opinion, are only possible if you adopt an incomplete reading and a very selective and partial interpretation of the objectives of the official community plan, paying little heed to the Oak Bay's heritage plan and to the statement of significance for this area. And if one accepts a narrow view as to what contextual actually means. 
if you restrict it to the notion of lot sizes, lot scale, lot shapes, yeah, I guess it's contextual on paper. But that discounts and ignores such principles as the topographical considerations that you've been asking about blasting, the environmental impacts, and the streetscape character and the ambience that the Heritage Commission felt so deeply and strongly about to protect. Let me just talk a bit about the proposed HRA bylaw attachment too. There I think we see, uh, I was going to say, an astonishing testament to the savvy expertise of the applicant. So I... I <laughs> This is a legal document in which, as the old saying goes, the devil is in the details. And I think we've heard about that tonight already. I won't over that, but I'm glad to hear the applicant say he is prepared to have section 11.2 removed from the HRA bylaw. That to me was one of the most deeply troubling parts of this, but I remain troubled to learn that it was municipal legal staff. I assumed it was the savvy and clever maneuvers of Mr. Miller and his legal staff. I could have, I could have lived with that. <laughs> I expected that, but I'm stunned to hear that this was came from our quarters. So again, as Angus Matthews says, let's help support our staff to do as good a job as possible. Because um, if that had gone through, what a setback for heritage conservation before the HCA had even gotten born yet. This would have driven a stake through the heart of it. So one has to ask, what heritage benefit does a four-lot subdivision provide the community in our municipality? Is this the best we can do? Let me just finally offer some remarks, building on Stuart Stark's comments about the four consultant reports prepared by Luxton and Associates. Now, every consultant, and I've done this in my life, has a duty towards their client. We cannot expect the conservation plans or the statements of significance from Luxton and Associates to be unbiased. But there is an obligation on our part to be very careful, and their part as well, to be careful with the facts. In the absence of an independent report, we have to be on the lookout for any statement which could unreasonably undermine the case for heritage and heritage revitalization in Oak Bay. In attachment six, for example, the use of the word rubble is applied to the stone wall on Prospect Place. With respect, that's questionable. Part of the wall is made of dressed granite on both sides using pieces of granite much the same as those on York Place with careful fitting and minimal thickness of mortar and the same tubing application. The, the picture you have been shown tonight about the Prospect Place wall, there's a part of one, one stone missing off the top. Again, that's just happened in the last six or seven months. Um, the consultant talked about the primary wall and the secondary wall. Mr. Miller talked about how he's fond of the York Place wall. So the prospect place wall gets presented as the less favored sibling or child. Calling it rubble, calling it retaining, calling it secondary. Um, allow to frame it as, well, it's okay if we punch a lot of holes through it then because it's not that important. The reason the difference in the two walls is the York Place wall was when the houses were being built for Sir Charles Hibbert Tupper and his neighbor, the former premier of PEI, they had a, an idea of a classy street there that Tiarks and Rattenbury wanted to design. The Prospect Place Street, as you know, was to go right into Rattenbury's property. It was a driveway, and he wanted it in a more ur a rural ambience. It was deliberately designed to be different. They could have done them identical if they wanted. He didn't want it that way. It's not a secondary wall. It's not rubble. It's an important heritage feature that was planned and intended by the original visionaries of that area. In Attachment 7, the map on page 31 of the conservation plan shows four driveway cuts to the wall on Prospect Place. There's already, we know, a permitted cut for a 30-foot wet width, but this is shown on the consultant's map as approximately 12 feet wide. All four cuts shown on the map amount to about 15% of the total wall length, but with the cut already permitted for 30 feet and the steep bank behind the others, they will amount to much more than just 15 or 
20% of the wall. In attachments eight and nine on the statement of significance in the conservation plan for the carriage house, there is no mention of context in the statement of significance. No mention of the association with Annandale that you heard Stuart Stark speak so passionately about. No discussion of the historic circulation patterns of traffic for carriages and automobiles or land patterns. This is a major omission within the character defining elements of the carriage house. By leaving out any reference to context, it opens up the possibility of moving the carriage house off site. With context not mentioned, it, elim it eliminates the need to meet one of the fundamental standards relating to all conservation projects, namely, do not move a part of a historic place if its current location is a character defining element. Removal or re relocation of buildings is not a recommended strategy in the national standard, as Stuart just said. These standards were written to enable the preservation of historic sites on their original locations, not to enable a developer to conveniently move a structure off-site out of context with its original site-specific historical location. Let me be clear, I'm not suggesting that the applicant has done anything wrong. He has very capably pursued his property rights and his personal interests. What I'm asked, left asking is, I'm wondering whether the municipality has done everything right and well in upholding the public interest. I really wonder, is this the best we can do? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prince. Is there anyone else who wishes to come? Oh, so yeah, at least, at least a couple more that might want to come forward. Uh, I'm just going to, I appreciate the level of detail gone into here, but I also just respectful of time trying to, if we can just keep the comments reasonably brief, then we can get back to this table and get to a, a conversation. Please go forward, you, sir. You'll be pleased. It'll be one of the shortest ones. <laughs> okay, I'm Keith Benj. I live at 1710 Beach Drive, and I'm proud to say I live in the Prospect neighborhood. And to quote Francis Rattenbury, it is one of the most lovely residential areas I've ever seen, including the potholes on Prospect Road. And I like the broken pavement. So don't pave it, please. I'm going to repeat a lot about probably section 11.2. Um, if I'm reading it, it, reading the legalese correctly, section 11.2, the bylaw variance in the HRA proposal, would exempt the lands and subdivision from being included in any HCA, even if the development did not proceed. Section 11.2 of this HRA proposal goes much further by asking the, prop, the owner's property and subdivision to be forever exempted from all restrictions, requirements, and permits required under the Heritage Conservation Section of the BC Provincial Government Act concerning local government. So this is not just the local. So just it's, for clarification, Mr. Benj, yeah. we've all, I think, agreed here that that wording isn't, uh, isn't achievable as well as the applicant, so probably not... We're spending too, too much time on That's that one. Fine. I think we've already put that okay. one largely to bed. So I'm going to say the, the applicant tries to use the Heritage Revitalization re Agreement to make himself and her herself exempt from the Heritage Conservation Area. The intent of the provincial legislation enabling the use of the Heritage Revitalization Agreement by municipalities was to give help to property owners wishing to conserve the historical aspects of a site while having to face very significant investment significant investments for restoration. This is certainly not the case here. So basically, I guess what I'm asking, and I think you're considering it, is that we need to revisit 11.2 as to whether that needs to be included at all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bench. Good evening. Hi, Mayor Welcome. and Council. My name is Sue Enfield. I live on 1532 Prospect Place. I will try my best to be neither conflated nor confused. I request that you turn down the proposal to develop 1561 York Place as it falls significantly short of preserving the heritage features of the site. In particular, my concern is for the proposed subdivision of the lot into four lots rezoned SR5s. I feel that the new owner purchased this lot with the full knowledge that it is currently zoned SR2, which allows for one single family residential home. 
Apparently, the existing zoning regulations state that they may allow a two-lot subdivision for two single-family residential homes. And I agree that many of us feel that that is probably a satisfactory um, endpoint. Anyway, I believe that it may be reasonable to allow two homes, uh, especially if these new homes retain, reflect, and respect the features of the topography and neighboring homes. In particular, retention of the current zoning would preserve and should preserve historical elements such as the carriage house on site, as well as the current integrity of the stone walls and the gate. The developer in the past has described subdividing the existing lot into four lots as value added. I argue that the developer bought this property knowing full well that it is already a value added lot given its prime location in a heritage area. I worry about the value subtracted to the, uh, to the neighbours and the larger community of Oak Bay and Victoria should this proposal be accepted and the nature and the feel of the area be lost or damaged. <coughs> Further, I would ask the Mayor and Council if it would be possible to give heritage designation to the 120-year-old wall along Prospect Place. I ag agree with Mike that calling it a rubble wall I find offensive. That's just me as an aside. I believe that is, it has particular characteristics that add value to the rustic ambiance. Um, I am concerned for the potential loss of the history and ambiance in this unique heritage area should this wall be removed or significantly removed and the landscape significantly altered. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Hadfield. Good evening. My name is Bob Wallace. I live at 1584 Prospect Place and quite a uh, supporter of what we're trying to do and get past. On the carriage house, I wish we could call it something else, but it's a carriage house and it does belong there. Now, the interesting part about it is the, is the cost of maintenance, which is, was addressed briefly, and it will become a, an ascending cost to the community and let's say it's two hundred thousand dollars all in the pickup and value of moving that house i leave that figure to be looked at yourself it must be much more than two hundred thousand dollars which would help um, facilitate other buildings so when i look when i think about it that Prospect Place is unique. I don't want a sidewalk. I maybe want the, f the potholes filled a little more often, but we were asked if we wanted that way. We have agreed that way. So that's another part of it. As far as a wall is concerned, just coming back from Ireland and Scotland, you saw 400-year-old walls, and they didn't fall down. They were heritage, and they have left them. There is nothing. People go to see them as heritage, not as reconstructed heritage. The other reconstructed one was a one on a Jack the Ripper uh, uh, tour one time. There's not one place that he committed a murder in existence now. My point very simply is, you either see the real thing or you see Babel. And we don't want to see some sort of misconception about what we're trying to do. It's something for the, for the council to consider the staff to consider, and if the staff do need um, a, a help, then it might be considered to employ, on the short term, a negotiator who would be able to help do this type of thing and give them a little breathing time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wallace. Anyone else? Oh. Same rigmarole, please. Name and, name and municipality. Hi, I'm David Harris. I uh, live on York Place like to say welcome to the new councillors. A warm welcome. Um, I'd like to speak about the balance that we've been talking about. And I want to speak about the losses to the community of this proposal. We've already lost some stuff. They already cut down a bunch of scrub oaks, which probably are, were older than all the properties around them. And we've always, already lost the gates. Um, but more significantly, future losses. 
we've already talked about the loss to the wall and the or a large proportion of the wall on prospect we, th and the significant losses to the natural outcroppings by the way there's going to be a lot of destruction with the already passed house because that will be a canyon through there there's potential loss up to nine protected trees according to the planning footprints in addition to possible uh, loss to protected trees on my property next door there's the loss of the carriage house as we've talked about from its intimate relationship with the Annandale estate and its enclosing walls to sum up in my opinion this is the most one-sided HRA I've ever heard of and shouldn't an HRA be a win-win for the community and the the proponent as far as I can see, this is a win-loss, and the loser is the community. So I would suggest it needs a lot more work, if not outright denial. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Please come forward. Mr. Mayor, members of council, my name is Robert Long, and I live in Oak Bay, on Oak Bay Avenue. In the context of the proposed revitalization agreement, I want to talk about the driveway onto Prospect Place, the one that's been permitted. I'll oh. say I'll, I'll take Mr. Long, can you just speak a bit more into the mic so people get, uh, at, uh, watching online can hear you and the people at the back right. can hear you? So I'll just uh, say that again. That I, I, I'd like to speak in the context of the proposed re revitalization agreement. I want to talk about the driveway, the one that's been permitted. It seems logical to me that if all parts of the property are going to be are going to contribute to financial benefits for the applicant, then all parts of the property should be open for negotiation, including this driveway. So just a few words on the, on the driveway itself. The planned opening is to be 30 feet wide. It needs to be that big because the driveway has to go into the place where the, the outcrop is highest, has to go through a high bank behind the wall. It needs retaining walls. We call it the canyon. It's for a driveway to a six-car underground garage. It extends to, for 80 feet before going underground. It stays at road level all the way to the garage, and its depth at in places gets up to 12 feet. Can I have that, please? Thank you. Three, three of us estimated the tonnage to be blasted and removed. We did it in meters and then in feet. For the driveway, up to and including the underground garage, but not for any basement, the total is over 2,500 tons. These will require about 170 dump trucks, the ones with the trailers. But worse than the blasting or the trucking is that the excavation across natural topography will be permanent. It will remain a blight on the landscape. I'm just going to hold it just for half a second. Just for anybody in the audience uh, or watching at home, what he held up for us was a photograph of, uh, of an artist's rendition of that. It is in included in one of the pieces of correspondence that we received uh, in our package. So if you're looking online, you have, a, you have access to that as one of the letters. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Long. It will, it will remain a blight on the landscape and a mockery of the heritage area for a long, long time. It's all legal and permitted, but I believe it, it has to be part of any HRA negotiation. I ask Council to look after Oak Bay's best interests by sending this back, this application back for that, for negotiation. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Long. Welcome. Hello, Hi. Mayor and Council. I'm Sharman Minus, and I live at 1680 Prospect Place. I'd like to talk a little bit about the gates. They're very dear to my heart. In February of 2017, 
Stuart Stark gave a guided tour of the area around Prospect Place, Beach Drive and York Place. Mr Murdoch, you were there. Um, Eric Zelka, you were there, along with approximately 30 other people, including myself. Mr Miller and the applicant are, um, also attended and unlocked those gates to let us in on the property. As he did so, Stuart paused and told us how rare this type of, these type of gates are in Oak Bay. This, um, they're probably the only set of Art Nouveau wrought iron gates in Oak Bay. Um, as you've seen uh, yourself, um, the style includes sinuous curves. That's a hallmark of Art Nouveau art. This kind of artistic style was much more common in the architecture in Europe. It, it barely made its way across the water to North America. So these gates were commissioned by someone with exquisite taste. The gates were removed earlier this year and protective plywood walls were built over the gate posts. I assumed the gates were being stored somewhere. At the Heritage Commission meeting on November the 13th, I was shocked to discover that Mr. Miller had given them away for use as a garden ornament. These gates are mentioned as being a character-defining element on page 11 in the Statement of Significance of the Proposed Heritage Conservation Area. Now, at this point, I was going to ask a hard question of the applicant, but as I've just heard him say that he'd be willing to get the gates back, all I would like to say is, I really hope he does so, and I hope council and the negotiations include that as one of the very important things that we would like to see reinstated. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Minus. Anybody? Oh. My name is my name is Bente Swenson, and um, I am a resident of Oak Bay. I live here on Can, Oak Bay. Can you Avenue. speak a little closer to the yeah. microphone, please? Yeah, Thank you. right. My name is Bente Swenson, and I'm a resident of Oak Bay, and I live um, on Oak Bay Avenue. And uh, I'm very concerned about the um, the del of the um, development proposal in its current state. Um, in general, I'm not against new development per se, but um, it should fit in uh, with the OCP and it should fit in uh, with the, you know, with the general neighborhood. And uh, I'm not convinced that this does. I'm all for heritage preservation and I too am very afraid of what, uh, of what the blasting uh, is going to do uh, to the Prospect Place neighborhood. Um, I feel it definitely will uh, destroy some of the some of the heritage features and you know that that we all know and love and these features are part of what make this area of Oak Bay so special and uh, whenever I bring out of town whenever I have out of town visitors um, I usually uh, bring them uh, to um, to that area and um, I feel that well that this uh, that this development uh, is going to destroy part of that and I think it's going to end up looking looking a lot less nice. So I think maybe what council ought to do is indeed maybe don't turn it down outright, but uh, just you know go back to the developer and see um, if you can come up with a better proposal and one that more respects the topography and and all the heritage attributes of the area. And yeah, I th I, I think that the developer can can do a bit of a better job. Thank you, Ms. Swenson. And I, I do want to try to get back to this table. At some, please come forward and, and give your name, but I just, uh, I just in terms of time, trying to get back to this table to, to move things forward. Go ahead, please. Good evening, Mayor and Councillors and staff. I'm Liza Harris from York Place. We live next to 1561 York Place, and we have views of historic Annandale, and we can see the carriage house from our kitchen window. Its design reflects that of the Annandale House, and its foundation and mortar match the stone wall on York Place. In his report on the Annandale Carriage House, as we've heard this evening, Mr. Luxton, the applicant's heritage consultant, states, conserve the heritage value of a historic place. Do not move part of a historic place if its current location is a character-defining element. In that case, why move the carriage house to the southeast corner of Windsor Park? Why should the municipality now be responsible for it 
in a new location where it will lose its context. Have residents along Curry Road, across from the current one-story soccer shed, been informed that that shed is going to be replaced by a building twice its size and height? And in the agenda, I couldn't see the report from Parks Department to staff about relocating the carriage house. I did look for it because I wanted to read it. Oak Bay's Heritage Plan recommends conservation of historic buildings, and our official community plan states a heritage revitalization agreement is a tool to conserve the character of big clusters of significant heritage buildings and their landscapes. The Annandale Carriage House is a distinguishing feature of its property. Doesn't it belong where it is now, close to the home it was designed to serve? It could be renovated in situ and remain an asset to 1561 York Place. We've spent 30 years here, and I work in my front yard, and when I'm out there gardening, passers-by will stop, and they'll say, oh, you're so lucky to live here, because they're responding to the traditional homes and the enduring stone walls, the obvious history, and the rural feel. What I've quoted of our heritage and community plans urges us to retain these characteristics. So l let the carriage house stay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harris. You may have to raise it up a little bit. Or yeah, just speak loudly. <laughs> Your Worship and Council, um, I live at, uh, my name is Don Bieberdorf. I live at uh, 1564 Prospect, Prospect Place, uh, at least I will shortly. <laughs> Uh, and for the record, I'm not a fan of potholes because I was nearly killed by one um, earlier this year. Um, I'm here to speak in favor of this proposal. Um, I think it's a uh, well-considered, well-thought-through proposal that uh, uh, is a, it strikes the right balance between uh, heritage conservation and the development of the property. Um, uh, if we look at Prospect Place and the area around it, uh, by counting lots, it seems to me that that's about the right number of lots that could go on that property, consistent with the plan to have info lots in Oak Bay. Um, I'm distressed, I must confess, at the number... I am a lawyer by profession. I, I am distressed at the um, second-guessing of the planning department, um, one wonders why one has a planning department if uh, you don't listen to them. Um, uh, these people are professionals, and uh, I, I, my personal view is that they've done a good job of balancing the interests uh, in the neighborhood. Um, in terms of uh, four lots versus two lots, uh, we uh, are the neighbors immediately to the north, and um, uh, uh, my wife and I would prefer the proposal to uh, an RS2 proposal because we would end up with a very, very large house built uh, right next to us. Um, uh, we much prefer the idea of a smaller house uh, whenever that gets developed uh, being put next to us. Um, th this is not a... Uh, um, an HCA discussion, um, but I do note that um, the Millers have um, have uh, deliberately set the house far back. Uh, it's well below what is uh, how high they could have built it. Um, uh, my only complaint, our only complaint, is with the strand of Gary Oaks that are immediately adjacent to us to the south. Uh, we think it's uh, important to preserve those to the extent that is possible to do that. Uh, we note that the location of the proposed uh, a driveway in the lot that's adjacent to us is, um, would m maximize, if you like, the number of trees that would have to be um, uh, destroyed. At, at least we think. Um, the planning department can correct us there. but. Uh, moving that uh, driveway to the south of that lot would be uh, uh, acceptable. So thank you, and uh, uh, my wife and I, as newcomers to Oak Bay, appreciate very much your service to our community.
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Biberdorf. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Jill Pollard at 1580 Beach Drive. My husband and I have lived in the area for over 30 years. As per our letters, I would like to emphasize a few points which we and other neighbors are extremely concerned about. We are dismayed that there have been limited and late coming impact studies for this proposal. The scale of this project is vast, blasting thousands and thousands of tons of hillside for a four lot subdivision will adversely affect not only ourselves, who we are directly downhill from the site, but many other neighbors on Prospect Place. As I stated in my correspondence to the Mayor and Council on December the 8th, we and other neighbors have already experienced the negative effect from blasting and construction of a new home at 1564 Prospect Place. That project is of minuscule scale compared to this at 1561 York Place. The proposed driveway cuts and blasting will adversely affect the Gary Oak Meadow, situated at the north end of the property by the Prospect Wall, an environmentally sensitive site. The cuts and blasting will affect groundwater runoff and the environment. These destructive actions will have a huge effect on Annandale, the most important heritage designated home in Oak Bay, along with other homes nearby. A development of this magnitude in such a sensitive area, both from a heritage standpoint and from an ecological one, needs fulsome environmental impact assessments. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pollard. Is there anyone? Please come forward. Mayor, council, staff. My name is Barb Grant. I live in the neighborhood of 1561 York Place. I'm disappointed at this developer's proposal to cut up the historic wall on Prospect Place when there is already an entrance to the property off York Place. As you know from the information and maps sent last night, there are precedents in the neighborhood and in wider Oak Bay for one road access subdivisions. I'll briefly review these for the sake of those here. Precedent one, the four lot subdivision directly opposite the applicant's property on York Place has a one road access. And it really is one road. It doesn't have a turnaround bubble. It's just one road, hooks up to everyone's driveways. Precedent two, the gated community at the end of York Place, one road access. Precedent three, abstract developments, recent HRA at 644 Beach Drive. Yes, one road access. And it's my understanding that that, that piece of land is um, about 10,000 square feet smaller than the current site. So I, that, my point is that it's doable. Precedent, precedent four, the Jones Estate on Island Road, another good example of a one road access subdivision. A past Oak Bay Council ensured that the Jones Estate on Island Road was developed in sync with community values. By covenanting the iron gates, stone gate posts, and approximately 300 continual feet of, an, of original stone wall, unbreached, with a generous natural buffer zone behind it. I'm sure all would agree it's a beautiful place to walk by on the way to Anderson Hill Park. As declared in the Statement of Significance for the Prospect neighborhood, the 120-year-old wall on Prospect Place is a character-defining element so why not leave it for another 120 years to be enjoyed by the community? As was mentioned earlier, this HRA is nowhere near the benefit to the community that it is to the applicant. Is that fair? You know, in, in doing some calculations, there's another lot, each of the three smaller lots 
on the property are about the size of a neighbor's house on York Place that just sold. And I, I'm aware that the asking, asking price for that, I don't know what it sold for, but it was $1.5 million. So through this HRA vehicle, this individual would obtain three new lots and doing my math, uh, that would be worth $4.5 million. So the applicant has a great deal to gain here financially. And my ask is that if the, if the applicant is going to be enriched to that extent, that the community t should be enriched to an equal extent. Let's strive for a balanced deal. Let's encourage abs abstract developments to do what it did in its recent HRA at 644 Beach Drive. Create a one road access. And while everyone was talking, I had another idea. I thought, well, let's think outside the box. Maybe there's another way, rather than having to go through the prospect wall, if we want to keep the York Place wall intact, what about the idea of accessing it just through the corner of a neighbor's yard? Maybe there's a, a creative solution. One of the things, another thing that um, Mike Miller said was that he wants to be a good neighbor, and I believe him. And I think if we, in our negotiations, come to them with that kind of faith and expectancy of goodwill on the part of all people involved, that we can come up with something beautiful and really good for Oak Bay and that does honor the heritage values that we all love so much. So um, with that, I'll relinquish the mic. Thank you, Ms. Grant. Okay. I've cut my thing in half. My name's Ken Grant. I live at Neighborhood of the Prospect. I think my real problem is with Schedule 6 and it's the rock wall plan. And one of the challenges with it, this is the first time we've ever seen the plan, so we've really known, never known where the entrances or the driveway crossings were going to be. One of the challenges is, you know, um, first off, like in the Heritage Commission meeting minutes, it says 80% of that wall is going to be safe. So I'm now talking about the prospect, prospect place wall only. So it says 80% is going to be saved. In Schedule, schedule 6, it says 84% is going to be saved. And then tonight was mentioned 88% is going to be saved, and then I heard a 91% is going to be saved. So it's getting a little confusing when, if you think about this wall, and if you put four cuts in it, and they're supposed to be like three meter cuts each, let's say 12 feet each, the one at uh, Mike Miller's own property is a little bit larger. But if you add in the terracing <clears throat> on the Mike Miller's individual driveway, the terracing, you have to have it because the the... <laughs> the rock starts at five feet, and then the stone wall's on top of it. So you've got to cut like this. You can't go straight through. You'd have a canyon, and his kids would be jumping into 12 feet of abyss, and it would be horrible. Anyways, then we've discovered that because of this drawing, the next cut is still at one of the steepest parts. It's been mentioned already. So you've got to think there's more terracing. And one of the things that haven't been mentioned is that, well, and it's in this document here, is that they're going to put gate posts they're going to restore or put on new gate posts with the original rock or the rock that's been blown away or taken, you know, cut off from the rock walls. But they're going to, those gate posts are about, well, right now they're 27 inches wide. So you have to take off 27 inches eight times because there's eight sets of gate posts. And that adds even more. So when you look at the terracing, the cuts, the gate posts, I think you're closer to 30, 40 percent of the wall being lost. And for, that's, that's just, you know, if you did that, there'd be nothing left. So anyways, I would hope that someone would find out the exact answers because they're not here and we need them. And I would really appreciate it if we could get more detailed drawings. There were more detailed drawings on the 644 um, that Mike Miller did for 644 subdivision or HRA. And we need higher details so we can start figuring some of this out. Anyways, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Welcome. Hi. I'm Mayor and Council. I'm Karen Wallace-Prince, and I live at 1525 Prospect Place. Uh, I have written a letter to you about this proposal, and I know scores of others have as well. As you may know, 
I've been deeply involved in this heritage journey for the past two and a half years. One of my main roles has been to raise awareness, share information, and most recently, encourage people to write to you about this application. I understand that the heritage conservation area is not yet in force, but please don't discredit any letters to mayor and council that mention the HCA. These letters are examples of the community's deep joy about this special place, as well as their concerns about its future. The community understands that the HCA is not a legal document yet, but you would do the community a disservice by ignoring them. The district has the proposed HCA draft on a dedicated page of the District of Oak Bay's website, and the district is actively inviting feedback from the community on the proposed HCA. And I see that the proposed HCA is mentioned in the proposed HRA bylaw. For something that's not supposed to be mentioned, it's curious that it's specifically recognized and addressed in the proposed HRA bylaw. Both deserve close attention. All letters must be acknowledged. They all express the public interest. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Walsh-Prince. Anybody else wish to come forward and speak to us at this time? Um, all right, I'll Mr. allow a re-speak. Re yeah. Um, Mr. Prince. I've got a handout which I'll provide you. I don't know if this has been sent. This was not sent? No, okay. So this really is a summary, Mr. Mayor, of, of uh, our ideas as to what should be included in your directions to staff for uh, if you're going to go for option two for a further review. Can you just give it to Ms. Varela? Oh, there you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, uh, sorry, somebody else wanted to come up and speak? Or did you, is that it? Uh, so basically, just to recap, some of the key ideas is designation of the walls. But I'll leave it for your attention. It's to give you direction as to what you might want to consider in, a, in a, the option two as a motion. Thank right. you. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Marion Cumming from 151 Sunny Lane here in Oak Bay. And uh, I appreciate the Karen, Karen's comments a moment ago about valuing the letters and messages from people concerned about the heritage conservation area. And the... Uh, I find the um, the her husband, Dr. Prince, mentioned that it hasn't been born yet, and yet it has been conceived. And uh, as Councillor Braithwaite mentioned, the uh, my recollection is that it was actually under a quite active discussion before um, the Mike Miller made his purchase of that land. That's the rather controversial right now. And um, the, I'd like clarification on this. Um, let's see, I noted down the um, that it, a permit has been um, already given for Mike Miller's house, and yet several times he mentioned negotiations and I recall him saying years ago that sometimes when something he is building is underway, he'll change the plans. And I love that sort of creativity. And here we are looking for creative solutions, as Barbara Grant has said. And surely we can just use our sense of vision and what we'd love to see perpetuated and protected to come up with some definite solutions. The, um, that, that, let's see, I think it's bylaw number 11.2 uh, that would exempt the new development from the Heritage Revitalization Agreement. And I'd love to have clarification on that. Earlier, there was some discussion. There was, and some it was about coming. how it's, the it's new construction ought to be in harmony, and it can't very well be in harmony if it can be 
completely modern and seemingly out of context with the Annandale, which goes back to Confederation and even pre-Confederation antecedents. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Cumming. Uh, Chris Hemian, I live at uh, 2414 San Carlos Avenue in one of the few designated heritage houses in the neighborhood. What was the uh, last name, sorry? Hemion, H-E-M-E-O-N. Go ahead, please. And um, I just want to make clear that um, oh, people seem to say that Mike's not giving up anything to, uh, you know, to put this development through. And, you know, I think he's giving up a lot in terms of the heritage of the area because as it stands right now, it's two-lot two private property and he could take the walls down and the carriage house down because they're his to do so. But he's willing to make quite a few sacrifices in order to save them and I think that the trade-off is uh, respectable. And I think um, lots of that size, um, they're just kind of dinosaurs now that you know, the, you can't think um, that four lots is really excessive for the for the neighborhood. And I, you know, I I'm all for heritage. I live in a heritage house. I've spent a, a lot of time and money on it. But I think there has to be ways to compromise, you know, to make it all work. And I think this proposal is not so bad. Thanks. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Paul Zeek and I live on Beach Drive, just down the hill actually from the property that we've been talking about. Uh, I just wanted to comment on the process and the individuals and the people involved and the tremendous effort that goes into this, something like this. I'm, I'm, I'm duly impressed. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so impressed by the level of professionalism, the level of detail, the level of effort that goes into uh, something like this, and then to have a community that is so engaged uh, to spend hours, days, weeks, months probably sometimes in, involved in this. I just want to uh, applaud that. Uh, it really speaks to the level of uh, community, and I think that's what we're all after. Um, I also would like to comment, I've been in construction for 30 plus years, I, I'm retired now, uh, I was a construction manager. I managed uh, medical uh, facilities down in the States and up here, the construction development of it. And um, I've gotten to know Abstract off and on uh, through other projects that they've done. And I have to say, I think we're also quite lucky to have a group of people doing development that have the same sense of community that all of us have. Uh, we could be we could have some real mean dogs uh, doing the development, and uh, it'd be a different atmosphere entirely. So I think, I think it's important that we keep in mind that uh, while we have very clear ideas, sometimes not so clear from the conversations we've had, but uh, good ideas about what we want to see as a community, as a neighborhood, uh, the heritage, preserving heritage, preserving... I've never heard so much conversation about rock walls in my life. Um, and it's, it's, it's a value. It's a great value. Uh, we also need to keep in mind that, that the, the, there's, a, there's a flip side to this, and that flip side is there, there is change. Change is inevitable. And I think, I think there needs to be and I think that's what we're all working towards, that there, there is a good balance between development and heritage, development and community, uh, community and density. Uh, as we all know, housing is an issue in Oak Bay, in Victoria in general. So I, I just, again, just wrap it up and say that I, I think it's a, a great thing that we are all doing here 
uh, and we're lucky to be in a community that takes it so seriously and so deeply. And we're also lucky to have a, a, an outfit that's proposing some of this stuff. Now, I'm sure that there's a lot of things that could be done better, uh, and, but that, that's what the negotiations are all about. So I just want to encourage everybody to keep at it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Zekin. Mr. Zekin, can we just write down your name just so we have a correct spelling of it on the, on the piece of paper in front of you? Just oh, write down yeah. your last name. Very carefully. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Councillors, my name is Robert Craig. I live at 1670 Prospect Place. I'm going to skip a lot of the things I was going to say be in the interest of time and because they've already been mentioned. But first, my first point would be that the abstract Miller family HRA proposal needs more work. I think we've seen this based on, and it needs an evaluation by an outside group of experts to expose the costs and benefits to the to Oak Bay and to the abstract. And why I see this is because what we've heard, we've seen all sorts of errors and uh, some minor, some not so minor, uh, in bias towards the developer, whether it's been calculations on the wall or lot numbers or whatever. We, we also see a piece of paper which is very legalistic and, and I'm not sure that, uh, and I, I get the impression that it's based uh, on a lot of outside input, not just uh, the, the work of the staff of Oak Bay. And so I think, uh, I'm sure they have lots of, uh, of other stuff on their plate, and I think they need help, and I think they need expert help. And I say this based on a background experience in project engineering and consulting. Now, Mike Miller highlighted two meetings at Windsor Pavilion, and I remember them fairly clearly. And his original statement for that property was, I want to have a lovely family home, my dream home, and I want to send my kids to Norfolk Glen Lyon. And that was all wonderful. But he said, I also would like to do is subdivide this property, not to develop it right away, but so that when my kids are grown up and moving on, that then I'll have the, some value that I can pass on. So, so, and then here we are, a very short time later, and they're talking about right now and punching holes in the wall and doing things which, he, which contradict what he said to me earlier. My second point is that... Uh, what we've seen so far uh, seems to undermine all of our collective efforts uh, to maintain the, the heritage spirit of Oak Bay. Uh, I don't think we should undo the efforts of our forefathers here, those of us who've had, those of you who have had families and grandparents and so on, who worked so hard to make Oak Bay such a nice place to live. I don't think we should make efforts to undercut these efforts. I think it's our duty to, to carry on with the, why do people want to live here? We don't want to make it another downtown Victoria. Now we've heard lots, uh, there are a number of reasons I say this, but I'll skip a lot of them because we've heard all about the carriage house and the iron gates and the wall and so on. But one statement that really hit me and although you said skip it, we've all we're sort of covered, is the one in the proposal, which here we have a large lot for development in the middle of an almost HCA area. And it's, it, it's this, I'll try to read the few words that really got my extension, to make a claim for exemption from HCA rules for all future developments forever. And I was blown away when I found, when Abstract said this came from the staff. 
that that came in their written proposal. I, I can't help, I can't accept that. Uh, I, I have to think that the words came from abstract to the staff and the staff who have to work with developers and so on carried on. And I mentioned this for a second point too. It's another point by why in order to protect the integrity of the council and Oak Bay, these folks need help from an outsider. And, and the, the, it would be... Even there, I, I don't want to get into... Our, no, we no, don't okay. manage our staff directly, no, okay, and it's no, not appropriate okay. to, to be okay. commenting. Well, the, I, I, I'm ignorant on some of your procedures and uh, mea culpa for that. My closing <laughs> comment is regarding people and elections. We just had one. Uh, we, the voters, a lot of them were interested in what's happening on the development scene for Oak Bay, and they voted you in. And, and facts, the elections are based really on a combination of facts and emotions. And this, as you're seeing, this issue is a very emotional one in the community. And I think, uh, thinking of that, I'll appeal to the council to look to their higher angels. It's Christmas, right? <laughs> look to your higher angels and do what's right for Oak Bay not so much the money, do what's right for Oak Bay and maintain its uniqueness and its beauty. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Craig. And I, I just want to just touch back on there. I think any any implication of bias or, or impropriety on staff just has to be sort of tossed out the window here. I worked with all these people here very closely and uh, there's none of that. I can speak with great, great confidence. Uh, I think we have a we have a staff requirement to interpret our bylaws very clearly, uh, and they do a very good job of that. I think if there's a lack of clarity on things like the excavations as part of, of of construction or things of that nature, those are policies that we as a body have to address that may not have the clarity. But there's certainly no nothing going on with staff here that has any has any rank of concern. Uh, anybody else wishes to come forward? I don't, that's good. I will uh, bring this back to this table. We have a fair bit to, to go over now. Uh, I think the first, there weren't a lot of questions. I will say that to the uh, to the applicant in that process. There was a lot of commentary, but not a lot of questions. Um, I believe, I, I'll just invite Mr. Miller, Mr. Cooper back up if you want to address anything that was raised here in terms of the, uh, some, so many corrections that you want to make or any comments you want to make. And I'll, uh, you may stick around just because there may be some additional questions. Oh. No, 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 answer. Just go ahead now, please. <laughs> so, sorry, Your Worship. Um, what would you like me to do? I, I'm just opening it to you. If you want to have a, if there's any, Shh. there weren't a lot of questions posed to you in that process. There was mostly commentary. But if there's anything. I'll, I'll make questions. a brief comment in the spirit of time. Sure. Uh, or, uh, I think um, it's really hard to balance everything all the time. Um, I'm speaking in general terms now. So I think really, um, you know, some things might be doable. Some things may not be doable um, uh, with respect to what council may determine to be a reasonable balance. That would be up to us as the applicant, as well as, of course, staff to work with that. So I would say depending on wherever council goes tonight, um, you know, nothing's on the table. I'm happy to answer specific questions, but I would say, um, you know, we can only take information away from here and, um, and determine what to do with it. Um, so nothing's really out, certainly out of the question. On the other hand, it really would have to respond to a specific request or comments. Okay. Can I have one question for yes, you? Sir. Because it's been raised sort of tangentially. This is a question. We have an approved building permit uh, in place here with the driveway, with everything else. And, and obviously there's a risk of leaving that alone to you of you having an approval and losing it if this process goes forward. I understand that's being extended here sort of indefinitely. Um, is that something that, that the, the, the exact location of that house is required and, and you're working around that or is that something that you would be sort of considered moving or, or, or changing at all in the context of the broader discussion? That's a good question. Um, I would have to ask Mrs. Um, applicant that question. Um, you know, uh, no, nothing's ever completely off the table. I mean, um, I, I think if, if I can make some 
assumptions based on the discussions. There's been a lot of talk about a lot of a lot of things, and it, I would say if I if I may, an absolute position in here, whether it's on our side or on the community side, an absolute position probably isn't going to be best best served for anybody. That that's my um, general assumption. So I would say if you if we speak to the intent of the discussions, in other words, the things that may be quote unquote the hot buttons, perhaps we can work with those instead of trying to jump to conclusions, if that makes any sense. And we'll take we'll treat it like we do with any any um, uh, piece of property that we we do as we look at it holistically. I know that maybe sounds a little airy fairy, but that's not meant what to be. We really truly do and look at the spirits and it it's probably highly unlikely to meet everyone's um, satisfaction, but perhaps we can tick some, if not a few, uh, many of the boxes. No, thank you. I think that's actually a good segue back to this table. We have to give some direction here, uh, either as is uh, or changes that we would give. But I think we, we owe the applicant and the public and staff uh, as much clarity as possible uh, in terms of uh, what it is this body is looking for, which is always the hard part to take this from the general general discussion uh, into something more more tangible. So Yeah, and again, if there is no will of council at this time for the heritage revitalization agreement in its current form or, or variation thereof, we understand that. We're sophisticated land uh, owners, even though this has a personal nature to it, and we accept that, and, and we understand the bylaws, so we, there's certainly no um, ill will on our part. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'll leave it down. I'll open it up to the table here to uh, to the committee. If there's any any discussion here in terms of recommendations back to to the applicant and staff, uh, Councillor Braithwaite. Um, if you if if I could through you, Chair, I, Mr. Miller, I, I do want to ask you one question um, because a lot of people have asked me this question, and and I'm not trying to be. Um, um, insensitive or anything like that. However, because uh, I have heard the, the words come out of your mouth before when you're talking about properties within Oak Bay that you were going to build your family home on that property. And you're saying this again about this property. And I just want an assurance from you because that's very important to me and how I make my decisions is how much you really want to be a part of that neighborhood because that's really important to me. I, I could, through you, um, go uh, ahead, uh, sir. <laughs> Sorry, uh, through your worship, that's a really good question, and you know I'm happy to get into specific detail and support data accordingly. But there, um, there has only been one development development with the intention that we would stay in a property, and that was in early 2000. To be totally frank, there's been a lot of speculation, a lot of hearsay. It's absolutely uh, incorrect when we and I'll just briefly touch on it. When we left Beach Drive, which we intended on keeping for ourselves, the only way that worked for us was the removal of that home. Based on this clear um, passion around heritage, we pivoted our plans. That around um, very coincidental timing around York Place, which was happy to show the file of the mini correspondence. Um, we do have a deep desire to be at York Place. All that being said, we're in we're in a serious um, dilemma now where we're not sh it's it, we don't want to have a win lose whether it's us or the community because you know I'll just tell you that's our intention to be there long term I I can say it with a straight face it's not my, that's you know there's there's no better intent than what I'm telling you right now and I've told that to the neighbors and all the while there's been some speculation that we've changed our pivoted that's never been the case so what I'll say is, I think land use has to be based on its merits, so I respect council's uh, position. However, yes, it's absolutely our intention to be there. We're vested into the community. We want to be in the community for all the same reasons that this community wants to remain in the community. I feel so passionate about it. And I will say that I've taken as large a commitment uh, as I've ever done with any property, and this one has an added element of emotion on both sides. So wherever it goes from here, we we understand it, we respect it. We'll have to remove our homeowner's hat when we if if we have to make decisions that are just out of our control uh, and where we go from it. So I ideal Thank situation, we stay. So, so just to go ahead, follow up. Um, so even if you weren't given a subdivision 
in the um, the way it is um, presented to us tonight. So if it was wasn't a four lot subdivision, but a two lot sub subdivision, would that change your mind dramatically? Or I think um, I think uh, the answer is yes and no. Sorry to be elusive. I, lots happened tonight. Lots been said. Again, I'd probably defer to Mrs. Applicant because I think that. Um, the, you know, if we there isn't a win-win situation, if it became an as a right two lot subdivision, I'm not sure that a lot of the spirit of the discussion is going to be met, and then in turn we're going to be held potentially accountable. On the other hand, um, we'd like to stay, and um, we could certainly work with that plan, but um, I'm not. I, 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 you know, there's been a lot of things said tonight, and I'm not sure. Sleeping on something is always a better a better outcome. I'm not sure. You know, there's going to be mixed emotions in the community because there's a lot of a lot of stakeholders. Um, we heard from many tonight, but there are other ones, and um, and that would I would refer back to Rebecca. And I think it's a it's a bit of a deeper discussion. Sorry, sorry to not give you an absolute clear. And I, I would also just point out at all times. I mean, really, the, whatever we do here is will resonate for hundred years or longer in all likelihood. So I think yes, we sir. have to make the decision. Yes, sir. Very clearly on the long term best best use of the land. Councilor Braithwaite, you have something else? Uh, yeah, so um, thank you. Um, if you want me to give my thoughts on... Yeah, I think it's time forward. for us to go through the thoughts. Okay, yes, so, thank I, you. so I, I, I'm... I mean, I'm very appreciative that uh, that someone wants to do something with this property, but in the long run, I don't believe that we can ignore the HCA. Um, I do, in my heart, really truly feel that this should only be two lots. I, I, I'm not really sure why this came to us. I, I think that... Because Heritage turned it down, I, I, I would have thought that perhaps the applicants might have wanted to do a little bit more work on it before they brought it to this table. Um, because to me, it needs a lot more work. Um, there's so many questions that I still have about lots of different um, aspects of it. I mean, some of the stuff came up in some of the letters, like the, the groundwater runoff, um, the environmental impact. Um, you know, Stuart Stark talked about talking about the cake before we talk about the icing. I think that's really important. Um, so for me, I couldn't move forward with it as this with the staff recommendation. I think that um, probably option number two, which I believe is to um, send it back to staff and have more discussion would be um, a little bit more along the lines that I would like or to turn it down completely. Um, but I would love to hear what everybody else has to say as well. Thank you. And, and I'm just going to ask if people have specific uh, things that they would like to see that we can pass on to staff as part of that discussion, if it's going to be referred. I think we need that. I think we need to have a bit more clarity to, to staff. Councillor Green. Thank you. And first of all, thanks to staff for the much detailed report that they provided. Thanks to everyone who spoke. It was much appreciated. Um, I'm feeling probably similarly to Councillor Braithwaite that option two seems to be the best option at this time. Um, I also appreciate all the work that the applicant and his team have done, both Mr. and Mrs. Applicant. Um, <laughs> um, it's always a difficult decision around heritage matters, and I know this only because I've learned through um, being part of the Heritage Commission in Oak Bay. Um, and it's, it's an ongoing learning experience. But I have to say that in the final analysis, it is emotional. And so it should be, because history is emotional. And, and the meaning of history is emotional. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with emotion. And I think that's often what drives many of the decisions around heritage, in fact. And uh, that, that can be a healthy thing. Um, I also feel that um, if I was asking staff to look at this again, I would ask for an environmental impact assessment, specifically related to hydrology, uh, the trees, and and the uh, the elements of topography that could be impacted by blasting. Um, I would also ask for a geodesic impact assessment, which would involve the blasting elements of this proposal. Um, I want to be absolutely sure that we're not increasing the risks in that neighborhood, um, but rather we're able to manage them well, and um, that would be my biggest concern. And then finally, I would like the wording, if possible, um, in 11.2 of the HRA, 
bylaw, I would like that wording uh, removed. So those would be my expectations if, if I was going to return this to staff. I know we haven't made a decision yet, but those are my sort of fundamentals, and I'm sure others will have other things to say. Thank you. Councillor Nain. Um, so, uh, hmm. I, I agree with uh, what's been said so far. Uh, I, 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 my, my, prefer, I, my thinking right now is that uh, we send it back and uh, ask staff to work with the applicant uh, to see if we can get uh, an agreement that will uh, work better for the community and um, uh, as a whole. So one, one of the things uh, that's happened here is that the Heritage Commission has turned this down. I, I do understand that uh, from the Heritage perspective, but I think it's our job here to consider the merits of this as an HRA, but also um, the larger benefit for the community. And it would be troubling to me to, to reject this at this point because um, what what happens is we lose the opportunity to uh, preserve what we've all agreed is, is so precious to us. It would go right back to a two-lot development. We'd lose the walls, the, quite likely the rubble wall. We'd probably lose the carriage house. And we'd have, um, and, and the blasting, I'm not sure that we can do anything about. So if it, 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 it seems to me that it's in all of our interest to keep, this in negotiation. So I, I agree that that 11.2, or I thought it was 11.2 in the bylaw HRA should be um, scratched. There's a number, I, I would like to see if there's any way to keep the uh, carriage house on the property. I'd like to see that go into negotiation. Uh, I'm not saying that's a deal breaker, but I would like that to be seriously considered. And I was just looking up, I, I do appreciate what's in the uh, st heritage standards, uh, the standards and guidelines in the conservation of historical places, but I was just scooting around here. And I, 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 there's other places that do move historic buildings when push comes to shove. So um, if, if it came to that, uh, I'd rather save the building uh, than see it demoed. So, but, but that, it's hard to speak to this in its entirety because it's a, it's, a, it's a point of negotiation. I, I would also like to uh, see some setbacks if this moves forward uh, with an HRA that we have some uh, frontage setbacks negotiated on the prospect place side. And I would also like to see some setback variances on the two smaller lots that flank on the south and north side um, to those neighbors in the RS5 zones. So to give them a bit more space uh, for any new um, uh, development on those, on those properties, if, if, the, if the subdivision stays the same, and it may not stay the same. So that's what's challenging about making these comments at this table, but, but that's what I see right now. Um, the other thing is, if, if it was the case that the uh, openings on the rubble wall, um, the rubble granite wall on, on the Prospect Place site were stayed the same, I, I'd like to see some consideration of them moving the one uh, to, to ensure the preservation of the trees. I thought there was a possibility of mo some movement on the north property of that, that opening. And I also thought that the opening on the southern property could move more to the north, if you can follow that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, to, to give more space to the adjacent neighbor on the south. So um, some, some movement around um, those openings, if it's the case that the rubble wall is going to be. I also thought some, if, if there are openings on the rubble wall, um, that maybe some pillars or something. I think we've talked about that, so I won't go into that. Um, um, yeah, my, my, my point really overall is though that I, I would, I, would um, I, I think it would be a shame if this D 
deal collapsed. I, I hope that staff and the applicant could come together and find uh, a way to negotiate these points in a way that uh, has been expressed here this evening because I think it's in all of our interests, including the applicant and the community, uh, if we can find some ways to negotiate um, a, a, good, a good deal here. And I, I just say one more time is I, I have to be mindful in negotiation. We have to think of what the WATNA is, the worst alternative to a negotiated deal. And that for us would be that, in my view, going back to a two lot uh, deal, two big houses on there. I think the something with some smaller uh, properties um, would would be better. So. Councillor Patterson, I must admit I've 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 really struggled with this uh, application because I it, it's difficult for me at least to see it as a heritage revitalization agreement the way it's presented. But I I feel that you know we're we're almost at a crossroads and it is either we we continue to negotiate on heritage or we move forward as a subdivision. And there seems to be a lot of intent in the community to, to really want to work towards the, the heritage. And it's very unfortunate and um, you, not, not the fault or, or desire of the applicant on this, but Oak Bay's heritage plan was, was defined back in 2013. And it identified specifying neighborhoods that warranted heritage protection as an immediate action. Mm -hmm. An immediate action in 2013. In 2014, we adopted our official community plan and there's over 50 references to heritage. And again, it was identified as an immediate action. And we're going into 2019, and we still don't have that. that. That's not the responsibility of the applicant. And some of the, the clauses that I saw in the, what was presented tonight, I also thought were presented by the applicant, and they weren't. They were presented by the district. Um, so certainly, the, the clauses have been identified uh, that limit heritage overview of it with it within a the heritage conservation area framework and and so those have to be uh, discussed and, and removed I also think <coughs> the damage and destruction clause has to be um, revised if there is going to be consideration of moving the carriage house to Windsor Park simply because that is a big um, monetary value in doing that. And if the building does not survive, there needs to be some uh, balance to the community because that, that's a major cost piece within this deal. And, and, and so I would like some consideration on that. Um, I think I would like to continue down this road. I don't know that, that confining it to just two laws. Then we, if, we're, if we're going to do that, then we may as well just say we're moving away from a heritage revitalization agreement and we're doing a subdivision and, and, and frame it in, in that context. And I'm not certain as to if that would um, diminish our controls with respect to heritage or um, improve them, and, and I would rely on staff to come back to us on that. Um, certainly, any consideration we could make for minis minimizing destruction of the walls would be ideal, but I think we do have to be realistic in, in some of this, and I don't know that the, the carriage, I don't know that the carriage house can remain feasibly on the land with all the construction going on around it and be guaranteed to survive. So we have to be open-minded to that. 
I also, I think, agree with people around the table that this go back to staff for further negotiations um, if the applicant is, is willing uh, to do that and, and try to, at least on the other laws, work forward to, to making those laws developable into something that is more supportive of the, the intent and the spirit of the HCA because I think that would make it more acceptable to, um, to the community. And, you know, quite honestly, uh, the, the first two um, photographs that Mr. Miller displayed as evidence of his ability to do great heritage work were wonderful. And I think if one of those were proposed for, for this development, we wouldn't all be here tonight. But it's not the case, and so it is really trying to, to balance uh, the applicant's um, rights on the property and the community's goals. And if, if Mr. Miller's intent in becoming, you know, staying as a member of the community, he will be sensitive to that and, and will work forward with it on that, hopefully. So I'm hopeful if that we send it back to staff, we can negotiate something, while maybe not perfect, gets closer to what we would like as a community. Thank you, Councillor. I need Councillor Appleton. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I also will be supporting option two to refer back to staff. Um, I want to, before I, I give the reasoning for that, I just want to acknowledge staff and, and all the people that presented tonight, both applicant and community, for uh, taking the time to uh, present the information. Um, really appreciate your commitment uh, to passing on such comprehensive information, so it's very valued. Um, my decision making really rests on two points. First of all, I'm not satisfied, <clears throat> excuse me, cold. I'm not satisfied that all the options for accessing a potential subdivision through York, the York uh, side, have been explored. Um, I am not personally uh, opposed to a four-lot subdivision, nor am I opposed to uh, Mr. Miller being able to build the house that, uh, that he desires to build. Uh, but I think that it is clear to me that there is, uh, that there is the potential for a significantly reduced impact to heritage values, both structural and topographical, on the prospect side if options for access off of York are looked at. So if I was going to give direction to staff, I would ask that uh, any potential options for that be looked at. And, and I do appreciate staff's comment earlier that this, is, this could be potentially atypical from the way we do things. I think from what we've heard, the values are such potentially in this area that it may warrant an atypical approach. Uh, so that would be one, one thing. Um, the second component for me is, is that I think that in the spirit of the application of a heritage revitalization agreement, I, I struggle uh, a little bit with uh, removing the carriage house from the site. Uh, and I do understand the pros and cons of doing that. Uh, I think to make a proper reasoned decision on what is the best option in that regard, I guess I would ask of staff, um, it was mentioned earlier, we don't have an estimate of potential ongoing maintenance costs for the building were it to be moved to Windsor Park. So I think that that would be a consideration for me uh, in making that decision. So to have that, that kind of information would be valuable. Um, and also options for the adaptive reuse of the building on the existing property, whether or not there are some creative options for repurposing the building on the property that can be of benefit to the landowner. Uh, any number of different things could present themselves in that regard. So I would think that that would be something that uh, should be discussed with the landowner. And uh, I think that we've heard from the community that, that many options are, are desirable, uh, but that the preference is for the structure to stay. Uh, so. That's really the essence of my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Zelka. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Um, I, uh, I also am leaning towards option number two, um, only because I find the current proposal um, um, inadequate. Uh, I can't support the option uh, or the, the, the existing proposal as is. Um, uh, similarly, in some ways to, to Councillor Braithwaite, um, should option uh, two fall through or, or something come back, I, I, I actually um, um, 
probably don't see a problem with it reverting to a to a two lot subdivision, which um, the applicant is entitled to uh, with the existing zoning. Uh, if that ends up being the fallback position, uh, I might be all right with that. Um, so uh, it'd be interesting to see um, with that uh, um, uh, being, you know, uh, 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 what's the fallback position as being uh, uh, something that could be acceptable to me with respect to, and what I like about actually option three is that it minimizes the blasting. Uh, option, uh, the, the proposal has put forward with, with four house, four basements, four, four driveways, four everything. Uh, I, 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 I just can't fathom what that uh, property would look like at the end of that process. So, so that's why, I, actually, in reality, I'm leaning towards um, um, the, uh, the two-lot division, um, uh, but I'm willing to uh, see what staff can com come up with, and I do want to provide uh, staff with whatever resources they need and uh, definitely want them to feel comfortable to come forward. And if we need to provide uh, additional uh, resources, um, uh, it might have to be in an in-camera in meeting, but however we, we do it, I'd like to make sure that they have the resources um, so that they can uh, uh, move forward in a good way. Um, when I uh, uh, look, forward, look for specific suggestions to offer as part of, a, uh, of, of, of an option to um, approach, um, recommendation two approach, um, I, and I hear uh, many of the suggestions already put forward by my, my colleagues. Um, this um, this piece of paper, as offered by one of the members of um, of the public, um, actually uh, I think we've pretty well checked off pretty well everything everything on this list. Um, and uh, uh, the only thing I might add uh, is to uh, uh, in, that I haven't heard yet is to even consider the first item, the designation of York Place and Prospect Place stone walls. Um, that something needs to be actually <coughs> considered. So I would put forward this as my suggestion uh, of uh, two staff uh, to be considered in its entirety uh, for all the suggestions. Um, more specifically, I'll point out uh, section 472 uh, HR1 of our official community plan. Um, everything in there with respect to uh, the uh, support, the retention of heritage and character houses and other buildings through the following measures. There's about a thousand measures there that um, it seems to me um, uh, many um, arrows in our quiver that still can be uh, put forward by staff to, um, uh, in a good, strong way to uh, not, not necessarily stand up, but ensure that, that, uh, that um, uh, uh, the win, win truly uh, matches with what, with what the uh, proponent may, may uh, achieve and with what we on the other side of this agreement may also achieve. Um, we, the, uh, the, the rest of the citizens of Oak Bay. Um, so uh, I'm just going to mention 4721. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details because there's a number of items there, uh, but I think that should be uh, clear enough um, uh, for now. Uh, I do also want to support um, the uh, consideration also mentioned on this and mentioned by, uh, by, by Councillor um, um, Patterson about considering the house design, uh, the, 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 the house that's proposed for you know, the apparently an approved building permit. Um, I never, I, I didn't really think it, it actually was complementary to uh, to to the to the neighborhood. Um, uh, of course, the uh, the the proponent, um, it's it's the family home, and and they get to do what they like to the extent of the law. But uh, but hopefully uh, there will be consideration might be made in that area as a way of part of the win-win to make sure that the house design is in keeping with the heritage values of the area. So um, I'll, uh, I'll pause there. Thank you, Councillor. And Councillor Braithwaite, you wanted to add a couple? Um, yeah, actually, I, I just wanted to kind of reiterate what Councillor Appleton and Councillor Zilka have said. I, I've looked at this um, piece of paper that we received from uh, one of the um, speakers, and there are definitely things on here that I think I would be really looking for, which would be <coughs> the designation of the York Place and Prospect Place stone walls, unbreached and intact with their original gates and gate posts, um, designation uh, by the owner of uh, the Avondale Carriage House, um, that the HRA would apply to the entire property. Um, one road access, one access road, I think is very, very important. Um, and it has been done, as be, has been said, on other um, properties. And I, I think it can be done on this one as well. And um, also um, minimize the, um, the tree removal. So I think that the things on this list are, are important to me. Um, and I would like to see them um, try to be worked into any other um, 
thing that would come back to council. And then the one other point I would like to make is in the bylaw, um, as it is written right now, <laughs> point number 10.2, um, and I'll read it because I'm not really sure that I understand it. And if I do understand it, then I again, can't believe that it's written the way it is. And it says, Un upon designation of the rock walls, the district hereby agrees that there is no requirement for the owner to obtain a heritage alteration permit for any works on the lands with exception of any activity impacting the rock walls. So the way I read that is that he does, the, the, the applicant would not have to get any heritage alteration permit ever at all for any of the land mm -hmm. for any of the work that they want to do is that correct I'll direct that to Ms. Jenning Judson <laughs> I'm tired too apparently <laughs> um, essentially what that is presuming is that the two designation bylaws that go along with this application are designating the carriage house or designating the rock walls. This is n not anything to do with 11.2. It basically just says that um, if you were doing something else on the lands, you don't need a heritage alteration permit because it's not heritage designated. I think, can we just leave that? If it's a, I think it's a concern that, that will be dealt okay. with as part Thank of the you. thing. I just don't want to, I don't want to do legal rewording of things at this table if possible. <laughs> Uh, anything else? Nope. All right. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Zelka. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair, for letting me speak a second time. Um, in addition to um, to the, the, the rather long shopping list uh, for staff uh, to consider, I'd like to um, uh, uh, put forward uh, um, and, and say it's great uh, with respect to timing. Uh, we're going to be reviewing our priorities, our council priorities, uh, and, and, the, and the budget that gets applied to that. Um, uh, we know that uh, some work is m most likely going to be moving towards with the, uh, the um, urban forest strategy with respect to bylaws and those sort of things. But one of the things that, that, that has concerned me uh, in the last term that I'm hoping we can get to in the next term that, that this proponent is sort of highlighting again for me is that we are a fully built out community. Uh, and that's great. Um, mm -hmm. But w unfortunately, what it, m m what it creates uh, or, or what, 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 um, what, what makes it maybe more difficult for us than, say, for some, uh, some places like Saanich, which has lots of green fields, um, is that we now have a lot of proponents coming forward that are building in um, not the most choicest pieces of property that one might think of putting a house, hence the need for lots of blasting, or the need to dig into steep slopes, or the need to build right down to, the, to, to a, maybe a shoreline development permit, or those sorts of things. Uh, uh, you know, just mentioning, for example, Sunny Lane and King George Terrace, uh, to name a few. And, and now, uh, God forbid, we have uh, 120 trucks, truckloads of uh, rubble, 170 dump trucks, <laughs> 2.5 tons of rubble removed. I, I just can't fathom what this might look like. So um, with respect to um, uh, not just steep slopes, but, 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 but how we deal with, 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 with uh, the, the, the topography of the lands, um, staff seem to, uh, uh, from, 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 from what it appears to be coming forward and what we're seeing actually um, uh, um, uh, in, in, in our, in our soon-to-be neighbors' properties, um, um, uh, blasting permits that uh, are doing things that I didn't think would be normal for Oak Bay. So, um, but apparently uh, some, uh, apparently they are. So I'd like to possibly revisit what is normal with respect to how we deal with topography and how we, what does respecting that mean? Um, I know we have to rewrite the policies for our uh, approving officer. Uh, obviously we don't tell the approving officer what to do, but we can direct to some extent what does the interpretation of the OCP mean? What does public I think that's a valid mean? thing Those to bring forward to. Those sorts of things. Uh, so we have lots of work to do that I really want to highlight for us that has really little to do with staff. Thank you. Thank you. I think that the policy piece is important. Uh, Councilor Green? We'll try and sum Sorry, this up really I, quickly I, here. And I'll make it brief. I just wanted to add through you, Chair, um, would it be possible to um, if the staff needs to, to bring in an independent heritage consultant to assist with this process. Um, it is something that the Heritage Commission has talked about for many years, um, the need for heritage um, consultant expertise on projects like this that are very complicated. And I, I think that's something that perhaps if, if staff wants to pursue that we, 
we have said we would provide the resources necessary to assist and if if staff would find that helpful we would be you know we would be supportive i hope um, and the other thing is that the important work of the commission i think um, it's important to acknowledge that that they have a lot of expertise at that table and when they make recommendations they are just that recommendations to guide council but i just want to acknowledge the work that they did as well in prepare, helping to prepare for this meeting. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, everyone. I just want to thank the applicants. This is a long night of having to listen to, to talk, and, and thank everybody who's sitting through in the audience and participating and, and, and giving their feedback. Um, I, you know, I, I certainly, it's a huge uh, application package, as you all know, anybody who's had to read through it. So uh, a lot of work gone into this already, and I think we need to be as clear as possible going back. Um, but I do want to just express my thanks, and I think one speaker spoke to it in terms of just the interest and the love of this community that gets reflected all the time in these processes. Um, what I heard tonight, and I'll try and reflect it a little bit, and I think this is probably where I'm, I'm leaning on, um, I think the retention of those, those, this pocket of trees, um, retention of the carriage house if at all possible, um, I think it's important, uh, I guess what I've heard is, that the, for the majority of people at this table, that, that we're willing to be quite flexible in terms of those lot designs and the number of lots that are on there. Th that hasn't been the primary issue raised here at this table. It's really how do those lots fit and meet with the top of the maintaining the topography. Um, and I and I, I personally, I, I know it's it's been expressed as me very difficult, but if we can move the access off of York Place and retain that that continuity of that sort of that rock outcropping um, with minimal um, uh, breakages in it that would be certainly a, a positive from my perspective uh, and it's obviously that's where the level ground is as well on that on that lot um, and finally wherever there is heritage assets if we're going to do this as a heritage revitalization agreement we should make every effort so the gates um, restoring those um, the carriage house if it can if it can be kept in there and again I would encourage staff and the applicant to be flexible and, and innovative on that if that's a little mini lot or something like that that gets sort of carved off and, and used in a way I don't think you're going to see a lot of uh, pushback here on that. I think we're looking for some creative solutions on that. Um, but I think it would have to get married to retention of some of those other heritage aspects in a more more whole way. Um, that's how I'm interpreting some of the, the, the what I've heard around this table and from the and from the community. So um, I, I'm not sure we're not we don't I don't want a motion that sort of lays out all these aspects. I think we need to give a fair bit of flexibility to staff. Um, but I think I'll just, uh, is there anything else here that anybody else wants to do? We need a motion here to send it back to staff. So, um, it's actually option two to send it back to staff for, 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 for further negotiation with the applicant. With, with taking into account some of the points that we've brought forward. Yes. Now, I, I think it's, in fairness, it's probably not an unreasonable time if the applicant, is it procedurally, can I bring the applicant forward again if he has any outstanding questions to get some more clarity on what this body is giving? Um, Mr. Miller, would you like to come forward? Do you have any questions? Uh, do you want some more clarification on, on some of the, and we've had some general discussion here. We have not given firm direction, somewhat intentionally here to, to staff uh, as to, what to where to go. Thank you, Worship. Um, we've been vigorously taking down notes, so I, I, I think, uh, I, while I'm hearing slightly different versions of similar things from from council, sorry, from committee, uh, including yourself, I think um, I think the the most important thing is to try to again, and I said it before, take a holistic approach to some of the th some of the things that the spirit of things. Um, but like I said, I don't want to sound overly uh, elusive here, but try and take that approach because I think um, it's a shopping list of. of Oh, plenty, and and I'm not sure everything can be it can be met. Um, but I certainly, um, at this point in time, in the absence of a um, confidential deliberation, um, I'm willing to. Um, I think the most appropriate thing is reengage um, a few of the key stakeholders, probably, because I think respectfully, and then and then come back to staff, because I think respectfully coming back to staff and negotiating with staff in absence of some of these things, because I again. Um, without um, collaboration with the with at least a few particular stakeholders, most notably, I would say the south uh, adjacencies uh, of the two properties, one on York, one on Prospect. I think it's going to be very difficult to try and negotiate with yourself within the absence of that, because staff may take a slightly different approach to it, and then come back to staff. And um, certainly at this point in time, I think we're willing to do that. 
Yeah, and thank you. And I think that is the intent of this body is that you guys have that freedom to take that holistic approach to to a solution coming back. So thank and again, you try that. and strike a balance with 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 everyone, including including the community and ourselves. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank Very you so much. much. Uh, so we have a motion. Is there any clarification that staff want from us at this point to add to this? I got one, two head shakes. Excellent. That's what I like to see. Uh, all right. Then in that case, I will call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Uh, I need a meeting. Move to adjournment. Moved and seconded. Uh, all right. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Oh, sorry. Question. Yes, I'm going to. Yes. So I'll call the question. Then we're going to come back. We're going to just adjourn for five minutes. We're going to reset the uh, the clock, and then we're going to come back and try and do a reasonably short council meeting to follow on. So if anybody wants to leave at this point, this is an appropriate time to do so. Thank you very much. But uh, five minute break and we'll be back here for, for council. All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Thank you.
All right, if everybody could uh, find their way back to our, uh, our seats. Yes, uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order here. If uh, everybody can can have a seat, we will get going. That's staff and uh, council. We both got to do it. All right, thank you, everyone. We're going to call to order the regular meeting of council. Uh, again, I'll acknowledge that the lands on which we gather is the traditional territories of the Coast and Strait Salish people. Specifically, we recognize the Lekwungen speaking people known today as the Songhees and Esquimalt Nations. Uh, their historic connections to these lands continue to this day. I will start off with minutes and reports. Item number one of November 26th, Council. Approval. Moved. Seconded. Any discussion? Corrections? No? Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. Um, number two, Special Committee of the Whole. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Nothing done. Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed. I am not going to make any remarks tonight, just to keep speed it up. Uh, but for all those people who did so many wonderful events, thank you. And maybe I can just add some official ones into the minutes so that they get done. Um, public participation period. If anybody wishes to come forward and speak to us, uh, this is the time. We have 20 minutes allocated. <laughs> you, you may get booed off the stage. Just say your name and, and municipality, please. We're not on? Oh, there we are. Okay. Michael Prince, uh, Oak Bay. Uh, I just wanted to uh, acknowledge the good work of the working group, the Heritage Working Group. And our report is finalized. We'll be coming forward to council hopefully early in the new year. And I just would say in light of what just transpired in the community of the whole around an HRA, that the HCA get as much energy and attention and drive of moving it fast forward like a proposal we just saw. So I really hope that this doesn't drag on through till April or May or June, that we see this in a very timely but expeditious way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prince. Anybody else wish to speak? I'm Sharman Minus of Oak Bay. I'd like to propose, um, having gone through this process and finding the information given on Thursday, and it was vast. I mean, one report was 94 pages, for example. Um, it wasn't just that. I, I have two suggestions. I don't know if this is a place to suggest them. Go ahead. Um, that perhaps there could be like a, always a week in hand for proposals like this. If someone submits it on a Wednesday, it doesn't go to a Monday meeting. It would go for a week Monday's meeting, and then it's posted on the website. So people get plenty of time to look at it and analyze it. And uh, my second suggestion is something that, um, through the chair, that Bruce Anderson is used to. The um, website in Nanaimo as far as letting people know about permits, is sort of interactive. You, there's called What's Happening in My Neighborhood, and it goes by address, and every permit that's been approved is up there with the address. You can click on it. You can see who applied for the permit, what is the permit, and all the plans associated with it. Now, um, Ms. Jensen has done a sterling job even getting some of that information out there in a the form of a PDF, but with all the 
activity that's going on in Oak Bay, I found reading those PDFs at night, which are in no particular order, and trying to find what I was find, made my eyes cross. So I don't know if we can get the techie who invented the Nanaimo thing to come here and do that for us. And those permits just go up as they're approved. But that would be a real help for things like this. Um, and that's all I wanted to say. Thank you thank very you. much. I think both of those are things that we're considering right now in terms of our things. So thank you. Uh, anybody else? Oh, please come forward. Uh, Curtis Hobson, Oak Bay. Um, this is about the Committee of the Whole, so I'll make it very brief. Uh, I found it very, very troubling that, uh, regarding the HRAs that um, I don't know if anyone else knows it, but I, I often feel there's an implied threat that if the HRA is not granted, something bad will happen to the heritage. For instance, uh, Mr. Miller's representative mentioned Mr. Miller could knock those walls down. Now, uh, to me, that that just just is mind-boggling, right? That he he could do that, and so um, as a citizen who doesn't live in the heritage conservation area, I find that really really troubling. Um, the last uh, HRA for Beach Drive, there, I also felt it was implied that if it wasn't given, that the mansion could disappear. So uh, that's just a general comment that I found uh, really troubling, and I didn't want to say it in front of Mr. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Hobson, and uh, I, we don't muzzle anybody, so they're allowed to say what they say here. Uh, anybody else wish to speak? Seeing none, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we have Community Emergency Preparedness Fund grant application. We have, uh, oh, the fire chief is here. I just saw him emerging from our new uh, system of hidden side room. Um, is there anything, uh, Chief Coffey, that you want to speak to on this? It's, uh, we see the application, the details in front of us. Um, uh, apologies, uh, sir. I have to uh, withdraw from this discussion. I'm in conflict of interest. Can you just give a quick nature of the conflict? I work for Emergency Management British Columbia and they give by day, and they administer the CEPF funds. Okay. Please excuse yourself, and we'll start when you leave the room. Your Worship and Council, uh, this is an opportunity for the municipality to uh, uh, work with uh, other um, uh, communities within the region as well as our own community to put together a, a uh, plan for evacuation and the funding's available through the UBCM at no cost to us. Uh, there's no grant money that or uh, supporting money that has to be put forth. Um, and uh, ultimately what we're looking to do here is to get to a point where we can have eight communities uh, go in together on this uh, to do a broader regional piece as well as doing uh, each individual municipality at that time. I think it's of great benefit to the municipality to do this. There is some in-kind costs that uh, we will incur through our current staffing um, with uh, um, the um, <clears throat> pieces that we'll have to do for public consultation with it, as well as uh, the evacuation drill that we look forward to, to taking forth. But um, the recommendation is before you. Thank you. We have the recommendation. Any questions, Chief Cockel? No? The motion is fine. Um, oh, so uh, I'll move uh, the recommendation. Second. To support by supporting the $25,000 grant application. Okay. Any other discussion? Just just a thank you for looking out for these grant um, opportunities. It's really appreciative, and um, it looks like it's going to be great. So thank you. Yep. Councilor Patterson? And also, thank you. Uh, this uh, The whole issue of emergency response uh, was something that was really um, – mentioned uh, came up a lot during it, when I was doing door knocking in the campaign so I think this will be really appreciated by and supported by members of the community in getting this together so thank you for your work on this thank you uh, any discussion I'll call the question all those in favor opposed not opposed if uh, councillor Zelka can come back in you just grab him for us thanks on to item number six we have a on item number six which is a 2019 meeting schedule Looking for a motion to approve, but if there's any changes or questions. So moved, and then I, I, I do have a question. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Uh, Councilor Green. Um, we are considering, though, in the new year, during our strategic priority session, to review our meeting uh, times in particular. I don't know about dates, but certainly looking at a, I think, f for recommendations from staff on that issue. So I just want to make sure we don't lose that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed, not opposed. Thank you. Item number seven, heritage alteration permit. This was recommended by ourselves to ourselves for 915 Island Road. I need a motion to approve. Move approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, opposed, not opposed. Thank you. Uh, we have now first three readings of bylaw 4721, financial plan bylaw. Can I do all three readings simultaneously? Your Worship, yes, you can. Okay, so the, the process we're going to have here, and thank you very much, Ms. Carter, for coming in. Okay. So we have, uh, and I'm just recording to the time, we have uh, the Director of Financial Services to, here to answer questions. Um, and this is one of those areas on our uh, council meetings that we actually do invite the public to come speak to. So we have a uh, uh, in front of us bylaw 4721, which is uh, basically proposed amendments to the financial plan bylaw. Uh, so do you wanna, if you want to give a quick overview of what this is, Ms. Carter, and then we'll, I'll open it up to the public. Thank you, Your Worship. So most of the items on this uh, financial plan amendment are housekeeping items that have occurred since uh, the estimates meetings back in May. And many of them have also already been approved by resolution of council. So this is just cleaning up uh, our budget process before year end. Thank you very much. Um, anybody from the audience wish to speak to this item? I'm not seeing any, uh, any discussion from council. Councillor Braithwaite? Um, yeah, I have uh, a question. Um, Maybe before you do the question, then, can we just have a motion to I'll extend the meeting by 15 to, to 10.45? Second. Uh, any, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? All right. We're good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I just have a, a, a question about um, number seven, increase to deer control account. Um, can you explain what that is for me? Because I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. Through your worship, uh, what happened in 2017, there were funds left in the deer mm -hmm. control account, and unfortunately, they weren't transferred uh, to a reserve to carry forward, so they landed in the surplus at the end of 2017. Mm -hmm. So this is just to correct that. Okay, so then on the financial impact on page three, it says $557, and I think it's supposed to say, or $5,757, and I think it should say, $5,767, should it not? Good catch, you're absolutely correct. I do read the material, see? All right, uh, any other questions or comments at this point? All right, seeing none, I will, uh, looking for a motion to receive, actually, do we need to do the receive the report? Or just, it's received as by nature. So can I get us, uh, and I can do all three readings simultaneously, is that reasonable? Your Worship, if there's no changes required from other members of council, you can do all three together. Okay, uh, does that little change of correction not, a, that was just in the report though, wasn't it? Was not in the, okay, that was we're in fine. The report. Um, so yeah, I'll, we have a first, second, and third reading then? Oh, okay, we'll do it one at a time then. First reading, do you have a seconder? Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, call the question. All those in favor? Um, move. Second reading. Move second, second reading. <laughs> and seconded. I need someone to put up a hand. Second. Um, and uh, any discussion on second reading? Any changes? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed, not opposed. And then third reading. Move third move. reading. Thank second. You. Moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed, not opposed. Thank you. Um, we have for first three readings the uh, bylaw 4725 sewer user charge bylaw. Um, we have, in this case, there's no public Q&A time, but it is that uh, Ms. Carter's here for any questions. <coughs> Seeing none, um, I would just say if there's any uh, desire to revisit the allocation of sewer costs, uh, the water bill, et cetera, this is, this is not necessarily the place for that. That would be a place that we can consider as a future motion. Um, at this point, we just have to allocate the, the cost under our current agreement with the CRD uh, to our water bills and, and sewage bills. So uh, we have the sewer use charge bylaw. Uh, can we Sorry. seek first reading? Sorry, can I just clarify? So that sure, means please. that in the, in the new year, we can actually ask for this to come back because 
you know I'm going to vote against it. So, because um, <laughs> I, I do want to see it changed in the new year. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so this uh, any changes you want uh, that council would like to see to the allocation of the funds would have to come back in a different motion. Point. Were you just looking for first reading on this? Move first Move reading. reading. Moved and Second. seconded. Any discussion? I'll call the question. All those in favor? Oppo opposed? One opposed. Councillor Braithwaite. Uh, need second reading? Move second reading. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? One opposed. Councillor Braithwaite. And third reading. Move third reading. Seconded. Thank you, Councillor Zelka. All those in favor? Opposed? One opposed. You, you stuck your hand up so early, it was hard to tell. All right, thank you very much. And then for first three readings, bylaw 4726, water rate bylaw. Uh, again, any questions of Ms. Carter? Nope. Okay. Um, then I'm just looking for first reading. Move for approval, first reading. Move first. Second. First. Moved and seconded for first reading. Uh, any discussion? Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed? Uh, looking for second reading. Move second reading. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion on the second reading? Seeing none, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed? And third reading. Move third reading. Second. All right. Uh, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Not opposed? Uh, item number 11, 12, and 13, we are not doing the first, second readings of those or public hearing date. We do not need a public hearing date for any of the um, uh, funding bylaws. So then we're just at a motion to adjourn. Move uh, 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 um, um, A question. Oh, please. Uh, I, I, I rise on a point of procedure. Sure. Uh, I was out of the room when the, uh, everyone zoomed past new business. You know, in fact, I just realized as I was saying that, that we didn't, didn't actually do, do it. Business. May uh, we do new absolutely, business? Absolutely, and my apologies for that. If there's no <laughs> issues from a procedures perspective, uh, let's, it's at the bottom of my page that I skipped over. So uh, anything, any new business, Councillor Zelka? Uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to, um, to uh, unfortunately, Parks and Rec is not still in the room, Parks, Rec, and Culture. But I wanted to pass along the thanks that we came through via email and also from the uh, North Henderson um, Community Association about thanks uh, to staff for paying attention to the North Oak Bay, Henderson area, for the beautiful Christmas tree and other decorations that are being put up there. Thank you, thank you, thank you to staff. For, um, for, for doing that. Uh, um, in particular, the, the, the tree that's where Henderson and, and, and Fowl Bay come together. There's a lovely little piece of triangular piece of land that all of us put signs on during the election. It's now got a gorgeous Christmas tree that's in public land. Thank you. Thank you. Any other new business? Councilor uh, Bithway? I'll just extend my thanks to the fire department for um, the um, bonfire on Willows Beach on uh, Friday night when the sale pass was happening. Um, it was really well attended and um, just a great way for the community to come out to a free event um, and bring your family, and it was just really lovely. So thank you to the fire department. All right. Thank you. Anything else? It's really under uh, other committee's reports, but we'll just let it slide. Uh, <laughs> All right, well then, what I would normally have done under my mayor's remarks was to thank, as well, the fire and the Victoria Yacht Club for the uh, annual Sea of Lights, and I'll, I'll send these, uh, Oak Bay Volunteer Society for the volunteer event, and who was also attended by Councillor Zelka and Green, uh, the Monterey Voluntary Volunteers Support Lunch, which was also attended by Councillors Green and Braithwaite and Patterson, and uh, also had a chance to tour the new buildings at the GNS Junior School under a hard hat tour, and uh, lovely, lovely what they're doing on that campus, so. Councillor Appleton. So I just wanted to really quickly acknowledge that uh, in my capacity as uh, library trustee, I was up at the uh, at our local branch on the weekend, uh, serving seasonal refreshments and cider and cookies. Uh, and it was a, again a really well attended event, really well appreciated by everybody. Uh, and just would uh, just acknowledge all the efforts that were put in by by library staff. And I don't think you could really find a more welcoming group of people helping out a uh, a new councillor and a new trustee. So, Councillor Green. Since we're doing this, um, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to acknowledge and thank staff for the, the huge Christmas tree in the main lobby. I, I have not in my years of living in Oak Bay ever seen a live tree in the, in the municipal hall before, so I think it looks terrific. Thank you.
Mm. All right, I think we have a we're, we're all good. Move adjournment. Thank you. <laughs> Moved and Moved and seconded. Thank you, Randy, for the discussion. Call the question. All in favor? Opposed, not opposed. Thank you very much, everyone. And thanks for staff for hanging around for so long.